All right. Hello. How are you getting on? In this video, you will be able to watch my journey through the entirety of the Stardew Valley, but with loot boxes playthrough. This video consists of every episode in the Stardew Valley, but with loot boxes series. So if you've already seen those, feel free to give this video a miss. I want to go over three things before we get into the gameplay. Firstly, I am using a mod called Overworld Chess to add loot boxes to the game. What this mod does is it spawns random chests throughout the world of Stardew Valley. These chests, or loot boxes as I like to call them, contain cooked dishes, fish, seeds, basically any item you can get in the game. These loot boxes will spawn in on the first day, then seven days later a new batch of loot boxes will spawn in. This whole process repeats over and over again. Secondly, to keep things fresh, I am using three other mods. The first is the Mail Services mod. This mod allows us to send gifts to the villagers, send our tools to Clint to be upgraded, and send quest items to villagers using our mailbox. The second is the Part of the Community mod. Basically, this mod rewards us with bonus friendship points for doing certain things. This includes shipping a new item, talking to a villager in front of other villagers, and giving gifts. Finally, we have the Automate mod. This mod makes it so if we place a chest beside a machine, it will take the relevant contents of the chest and place them inside the machine. So, for example, if we put a chest beside a furnace and put copper ore and coal into that chest, the ore and coal will automatically be placed into the furnace. The resulting copper bar will then be placed into the chest. I think it goes without saying that these four mods will make the game easier, so I want some rather difficult goals for us to complete during the first year. Number one is to complete the museum collection. Number two is to complete the shipping collection. Number three is to complete the fishing collection. And number four is to achieve maximum friendship with every villager. This does not include Kent, as he only appears in year two. This does, however, include Leo, which means we really need to get the community center finished and unlock Ginger Island as soon as we can. At the end of the first year, I will come up with more goals for us to achieve during year two. That about covers the important stuff, so without any further ado, let us get started with spring. Alright, day one of our adventure. I begin by clearing out some space on the farm, planting my parsnip seeds, and making a chest. The usual stuff, basically. But now, now things get exciting because it's time to open our first loot box. We get cranberries, two summer seeds, and a weapon we can use in the mines. Not a bad start at all. In our second loot box, we get an artifact, pickles, a horseradish, and amaranth seeds. I donate the artifact to the museum and receive 250 gold as a reward. Something I want to do as soon as I can is buy the backpack upgrade. Otherwise, I'm going to have to throw some items into the trash can or go back to the farm and put my items into a chest which is going to take quite a bit of time. I donate another artifact and continue opening up the loot boxes in the main town area. We're mainly getting seeds and artifacts. We do get a lightning rod and the blackberry cobbler dish which is really nice. I introduce myself to some of the villagers before heading back to the farm and emptying my inventory into a chest. I head to the beach where I find another loot box. I almost forgot about the beach, so I'm glad I went there because I got an artifact from that loot box. Next, it's time to visit the forest. I assume this is going to be the area where we find the most amount of loot boxes because of how big and open the area is. While this is very good, it does also mean that we're going to have to make multiple trips to the farm to empty our inventory in between opening all of these loot boxes. I have to say, finding a loot box makes me feel an unparalleled level of excitement. Like, I can't even describe how fun it is opening these up and seeing what's inside. And the fact that each chest gives us a bit of gold is a really nice bonus too. We're also getting quite a few items we need for the community center. Hopefully this will lead to us completing the community center around the beginning of fall if we're lucky. One thing that could potentially have a negative impact on us in the future though is the amount of time I spend looking for these loot boxes, collecting the items, emptying my inventory, yada yada yada. It's not too bad right now because there aren't many other things we can do this early in the game. But when the second week of spring begins, it might result in us having less time to go fishing or go to the mines or things like that. But anyway, I would say that was a very successful first day. I'm happy with how that went. 
Day two begins with a letter from Lewis. He tells us about the town's mail service. This is basically a way of introducing the mail service mod to the game. So now we can use our mailbox to send gifts to the villagers, complete quests, and ask Clint to upgrade our tools. Also, a little theory I have about the loot boxes. There are areas that we can't reach yet where loot boxes can spawn in. So I'm assuming that if we don't open these on the day they all spawn in, or if we miss any other loot boxes, they will spawn in different locations the following day. And maybe that will repeat until we found every loot box that appeared on the first day. We receive a void salmon and three artifacts from the first loot box we open. That is a lovely start. A green bean seed and another artifact are collected from the second loot box. Yeah, I think my theory about the loot boxes respawning if we don't find them is correct because there's more loot boxes in the town center now. Marnie would like us to give her a bream. That should be a really easy quest to complete. I head into Piers and buy the backpack upgrade. This is an absolute game changer. Okay, no, no, it isn't actually a game changer. But it does mean we won't have to go back to the farm and empty your inventory as much, which is nice. I introduce myself to more villagers, taking advantage of the part of the community mod. I donate my artifacts to the museum, then I visit Willy and receive the fishing rod. Like I said yesterday though, we are in a bit of a predicament now because we have to choose between continuing to search for loot boxes or using the rest of the day to fish. I decided to continue opening loot boxes and I am so glad I did because I found an ancient seed. This is a really good find. Once it grows, I'm going to get a seed maker and put it into it so we can get started on getting a ton of ancient seeds as soon as possible. I do a foraging run, then I open a loot box containing an artifact and a trout soup. Sweet. We also get a taro tuber, which you can ordinarily only get on Ginger Island. So that makes me wonder if we can get things like pineapples, bananas, and mangoes too. Also, I have said loot box so many times already. I'm going to keep saying it for now, but if I feel like I'm saying it too much, then I'll use a different word or just not say anything. I, I don't know. I'll figure it out somehow. Maybe. Back on the farm, I plant my green bean, cauliflower, and potato seed. I'm not going to plant the ancient seed until I get a scarecrow though. I don't want to risk losing it. Finally, the rest of the day is spent fishing. I do want to catch the legend fish during spring, so fishing is going to be sort of a big part of spring. I begin day three by collecting some forage at the bus stop. Two reasons for this. Number one, they can be used as gifts for the villagers. And number two, we need them for the community center. I do another foraging run at the beach, then I find a sneaky little loot box that was hiding behind a tree. I receive cheese, which is good. That can be donated to the community center. I wanted to go into Piers, but of course, his shop is closed. Because it is Wednesday. I really, really wish his shop was open on Wednesdays at the beginning of the game. It's actually heartbreaking not being able to go in there. I chop down some trees and use my mailbox to give Marnie the bream she requested. Once again, the rest of the day is spent fishing. Also, I'm going to hold off on selling any fish I catch for a while. We don't really need the money right now. And I would like to save quite a few fish until we reach level 5 in fishing. That way we earn 25% more gold on the sale of fish. On day 4, I already really, really want to get sprinklers. I have a love-hate relationship with watering crops. It can be relaxing and I do enjoy it sometimes, but then other times it's a bit of an inconvenience to be honest. Clint wants us to bring him 20 copper ore so he can inspect them. The mines open up tomorrow so we can get that done then. I donate several artifacts to the museum and I must say, so far my favorite part of the whole loot boxes aspect is finding artifacts. It's going to make completing the museum collection so much easier. Hopefully. I will be so upset if I just jinxed it and it ends up taking me ages to donate everything to the museum. Also, for the first time in quite a while, I am actually collecting the rewards from the museum as they pop up. I already picked up the cauliflower seeds and now it is time to collect our melon seeds. I sell these melon seeds and the blackberry cobbler dish to Pierre and purchase 54 potato seeds. It's back to the farm to plant all of these seeds, then as you may have guessed, the rest of the day is spent fishing. I'm really trying to power through those fishing levels as fast as I can. Marnie shows up on our farm on day 5 and gives us the option to adopt a dog. I, of course, accept this offer and call the dog Jaden. While our new dog makes himself at home, I harvest the parsnips that have grown. 
I watched the cutscene where Lewis shows us the community center and take a look at the scroll inside the building which I cannot read yet. Then I head to the mines. I've got parsnips and chubs with me for energy and I have that weapon we found on the first day. And I already purchased the backpack upgrade so the first few floors were easy peasy lemon squeezy bro chachos. I'm, I'm, I'm never saying bro chacho again. Or maybe I will, I don't know at this point. Sometimes my own brain confuses me. Anyway, I continue breezing my way through the mines. I've also been making sure to return to the surface and put copper ore and coal into the chest beside the furnace. Because we are using the automate mod, the furnace will automatically smelt these ores and place copper bars into the chest. Floor 22 ends up being a monster only floor. Normally these are absolutely vile at the start of the game, but our weapon makes easy work of all of the enemies. I make it down to floor 25 before I decide to leave the mines. I do have some bad news to end the day with unfortunately though. We cannot use the mailbox to complete Clint's quest. We actually have to show him the copper ore in person. So we failed that quest basically, we didn't get it done on time, we can't do it. I chop down some trees before I go to sleep. I can already tell we're going to be making a lot of chests for the items we find, so getting wood is very important right now. I visit the wizard on day 6 and learn how to read the scroll that was in the community center. Sweet. Now we can start donating items. And boy oh boy do we have a lot of items to donate. I donate some minerals to the museum, collect some items from a chest and head to the community center where I complete the spring foraging bundle. I receive 30 spring seeds as a reward. I donate the rest of the items in my inventory to the various bundles, head home and collect more items and plant my spring seeds. Then it's back to the community center. It feels so good being able to donate this many items this early in the game. I'm actually really excited to see how soon we can get the community center finished thanks to our loot boxes. More fishing is on the horizon as I continue trying to speed run my way to fishing level 9. Thankfully I do reach level 5 in fishing by the end of the day so I throw some of my fish and other items into the shipping bin to earn some gold. I send my pickaxe and 5 copper bars to Clint on day 7 using the mailbox so he can upgrade it. Just to be clear, I still have to pay the 2000 gold to have it upgraded. Also, I have some absolutely horrendous news. I have to water every single seed I have planted. But it's okay. This is still relaxing. Sort of. Okay, no, I'm lying. I'm struggling a lot. I'm actually in tremendous emotional pain. Anyway, I take a look at the traveling cart and I don't buy anything, so that would have been a waste of time. But, you know, they say greatness is a journey, not a destination. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's move on. The beautiful thing about the mailbox is it tells us if someone's birthday is today. So I send a parsnip to Lewis as a birthday gift. I also decide to take a risk and plant my ancient seed. I'll be honest, I am relying entirely on luck to protect that ancient seed until I make a scarecrow, so hopefully everything ends up being okay. I donate two items to the museum, then it's another day, another fishing session. I won't lie, I was already getting bored of fishing by this point, but I persevered. I can be extremely dedicated when I want to be. And this, this is one of those situations in which I give all of me. Yeah, basically I spent the whole day fishing. Day 8 is a rainy day which is very good for us. It means we don't have to spend the morning watering our crops. I send Sam a Georgia Cola in the mail. I'm going to use the mailbox as often as I can because I would love it if I could reach maximum friendship with every villager before the end of winter. I also give George a leak in person instead of using the mailbox. See? I'm not completely relying on that mod. I I'm, just, I'm just relying on it quite a bit. I spend all of my gold on more potato seeds, find the lost book which always makes me feel just so incredibly happy, and plant the potato seeds. I think you all know the drill by now. We still haven't gotten our pickaxe back so I spend the rest of the day fishing. But the good news is this gave us the chance to catch some catfish which are worth around 250 gold after we reached level 5 in fishing. Clint sends us our copper pickaxe on day 9. Perfect, now we can finally resume our adventures in the mines. I send George a leak and then I realize there's water dripping out of my mailbox. I guess my mailbox is leaking. Do, do, do you get it? Like, like, like leaking? Because, because there's a leak in, inside it, like the forage, um, uh, 
Some absolutely marvelous news as the loot boxes have spawned in again. I get a duck egg in the first one. Nice. I pick up a deluxe scarecrow in the second one. That is even nicer. Now our ancient seed will be safe. Normally you have to collect every rare crow in the game to unlock the deluxe scarecrow crafting recipe, so this was a really nice find. Something unfortunate did happen though. There is a chest in Marnie's ranch that we cannot get to. That is actually heartbreaking. For the most part, we continue finding forage items, crops and artifacts in the loot boxes. Which I can't really complain about. We can donate the artifacts to the museum and the crops and forage items to the community center, so this is really helping us out. One thing I am sort of nervous about is when we complete the community center and the museum, those items won't be of much use to us. But at the same time, they could still be used as gifts, so it might not be too big a deal. We'll see what happens. I donate some items to the community center, purchase the spring seeds I haven't planted yet, and 75 parsnip seeds. We need 5 gold star parsnips for the community center, so I want to get those as soon as possible. I plant my seeds, then I go searching for more loot. I find garlic seeds, which is another good find. You can't purchase garlic seeds from Pierre during the first year, so we got lucky with this one. We find a large milk, which can be donated to the community center, then I head to the saloon to use the part of the community mod to my advantage. I talk to all of the villagers in there, earning some tasty bonus friendship points. I head home and plant my ancient seed and garlic seed, then I complete the crab pot bundle in the community center for which I receive three crab pots. Finally, we are in dire need of some gold, so I throw some items into the shipping bin. On day 10, I watch a rerun of the Queen of Sauce TV show and learn how to make stir fry. From now on, I'm going to make sure I watch the show every Sunday so I don't miss any cooking recipes. Our potatoes are ready for harvest, which is simply delightful. What is not simply delightful is that I have to water the rest of the crops. I head to Piers. Oop, no, I don't. Never mind. I goofed. I am a certified goofy goober. I place my three crab pots at the river and place a chest beside them. I put bait into those chests so the bait will automatically be placed into the crab pots. Then it is off to the mines. I find myself on the dark floors, which, as some of you may know from watching my previous videos, I absolutely despise these floors. Luckily, I have a glow ring equipped, so it's not too bad. But going through these floors without a source of light is like fighting a dragon with a plastic fork. It's just not a good time. I eventually make my way to floor 41 where I call it a day. I am straight up not having a good time on day 11 as I water all of my seeds. The relaxing aspect of this activity has gone out the window. Slowly but surely, I am being defeated by a field of crops. It's off to the community center to donate some more items. Right now, my main focus is completing the boiler room so we can unlock the minecart system. So, it's off to the mines for the rest of the day. I make it down to floor 55 before I leave. I throw some items into the shipping bin which earned us almost 4,000 gold. It's off to the traveling cart on day 12 where I purchase a large egg, a coconut, red cabbage seeds and an artichoke. I donate some items to the museum, then I make a heartbreaking discovery. The chest beside our crab pots at the river is gone. This hurts. This really, really hurts. I make a few donations to the community center, resulting in us being one item away from completing the boiler room. All I need to do now is donate a gold bar. I return to the traveling cart to purchase a cauliflower. Truth be told, I do not know why I did that. I purchase five salads in the saloon, and I also have an answer as to why I bought the cauliflower. I wanted to donate it to the community center and complete the spring crops bundle. I received 20 speed grow for this. My plan is to use this speed grow on the strawberry seeds I'll buy in a couple of days so they grow quicker. Also, it is finally time to make some sprinklers. We can only make basic sprinklers at this point, but it's something at least. Because it is raining, I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing. Mainly for catfish because I want to get a bit more gold, but also to work on our fishing level. Our parsnips are ready for harvest on day 13. I also collect some unmilled rice that has grown. I place the sprinklers I crafted, then it's off to the town square for the egg festival. I purchase 33 strawberry seeds and use this as an opportunity to introduce myself to the remaining villagers. 
Now that we have talked to them all, all of their names are unlocked in the mail system so we can send everybody gifts. Next, it is time for the egg hunt. For this section, I would like to quote the man, the myth, the used car salesman, Paul Heyman, in order to describe exactly how I felt going into this competition. I have altered the quote slightly to make it more relevant to myself, but the point remains the same. I need to show up at the egg festival and be a neon Aries like never before. The greatest performance in the history of Neon Aries' Stardew Valley career. The most determined, the most ruthless, the most focused, a beast slayer, a conqueror of conquerors, the goat of all goats. So that they say at the end of the egg hunt, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between, your winner, the ultimate scallywag, the number one rapscallion, the reigning, defending, undisputed egg hunt champion, Neon Aries. This quote played on a loop in my mind during the egg hunt. And at the end of the egg hunt, I was indeed announced as the winner. I receive my beloved straw hat as a reward for winning. I make some more sprinklers and plant my strawberry seeds with speed grow. I also plant some spring seeds I made before the day ends. Our potatoes are ready for harvest on day 14. Also, real quick, I made a goof. If I was a McDonald's item, I would be the McGoofer on this day. I did not notice that the recolor mod I was using stopped working, so for the next couple of days the graphics will look slightly different. I do eventually realize my mistake and get the recolor mod working again though. I sell the potatoes and some forage items to Pierre and purchase another 100 parsnips. There are two reasons for this. Number one, I still need to reach level 6 in farming to unlock the quality sprinkler crafting recipe. Number two, I need one more gold star parsnip for the community center. Demetrius pays a visit to the farm and sets up the fruit bat cave on her farm. I send a salad to Haley for her birthday, then I plant and water most of my parsnip seeds. I head to the traveling cart where I briefly consider buying a rare seed, but I decide to hold off on it. I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunities to buy one in the future. I spend the rest of the day in the mines. I donate a ghost fish and a fiddlehead fern to the community center on day 15. Then, once again, I spend the day in the mines. I really wanted to get to floor 80 as soon as possible so I could get gold ore, make a gold bar, donate it to the community center, and unlock the minecart system. Day 16 is the beginning of something beautiful. I just noticed salmon berries are growing on bushes, so that's going to be a great source of energy for us for the remainder of spring. I head into town and open my first loot box. I get kale seeds and a mayonnaise machine. Our second loot box contains a seed, a cheese press, a sword, and boots. Also, I'm not entirely sure how to approach describing the loot boxes at this point. Part of me wants to list every item I get, another part of me wants to only mention the rare items or anything cool we find, and another part of me wants to play footage of me opening each loot box while I ramble about something basically. If any of you have any ideas on which one I should do, or if you have an idea of your own, I would really appreciate the feedback on this. Also, it happened again. A loot box appeared in the ravine, so I can't get to it. That was very upsetting. Back on the farm, I empty my inventory into a chest and open another loot box. It contains a mineral which I can donate to the museum and a sunflower which I can donate to the community center. Marvelous. I make my way through the forest, collecting salmon berries and opening loot boxes. I also pick up Robin's lost axe while I'm there. It's back to watering a field full of crops on day 17. This will all be worth it when I unlock the crafting recipe for quality sprinklers. I use the mailbox to have Clint upgrade my pickaxe, then I spend some time sending gifts to the villagers. I purchase 5 coffees in the saloon, then I finally donate a gold bar to the community center. With that, the boiler room has been completed. One room down, five rooms left to go. I spend the rest of the day fishing. I've caught almost every fish that is exclusive to spring, I just needed to catch a couple more at the beach. So now at this point, the only spring fish we need to catch is the legend. Day 18 is parsnip harvest day which I am really excited about. I send a gold star parsnip to Pam for her birthday and sell almost all of them to Pierre. But I do make sure I keep 5 gold star parsnips for the community center. I purchase 5 blue jazz, kale and tulip seeds along with 111 potato seeds. I donate the parsnips and, as is becoming tradition, I spend the rest of the day fishing. 
Clinty Winty sends us her pickaxe on day 19. I plant and water all of the seeds I bought yesterday, which I'm very happy about, but it also wiped out our energy. So instead of heading to the mines, I decide to go fishing again. I am so very glad I learned to love fishing again during my last playthrough, or I would be so upset right now. Day 20 is a rainy day, which I am extremely grateful for. I harvest some strawberries and spring forage, then it's back to the mines after a two-day hiatus. Just like before, I'm going all in on the mines. I have never, ever been this focused on getting through the floors as fast as I possibly can. We're already down to floor 90, although that is in large part thanks to the items we've been getting from the loot boxes. But still, I am really happy we're this close to reaching the final floor of the mines. Some more strawberries and spring forage are ready for harvest on day 21. Just in case anybody is curious, I only had 20 speed grow, so 20 strawberries grew faster than the rest. Hence there being a strawberry harvest both yesterday and today. I make a few donations to the museum, then it's off to the mines again. I also decided to sell quite a big portion of the fish I've been saving, as well as a few other items. This added a tasty bit of gold to our bank account. On day 22, I finally make quality sprinklers. It felt so good placing these on the farm. The layout isn't perfect, but I can fix that in summer. So from now on, we should have quite a bit more free time in the mornings. I send a cauliflower to Jody in the mail to complete her quest, then I continue my quest to fill up the museum. In what ended up being an absolutely massive mistake, I buy around 150 potato seeds in piers. Why was this a massive mistake? Potatoes take 6 days to grow. It is currently the 22nd day of spring. There are 28 days in each season. In order for these potatoes to be ready before the end of spring, I would have to plant and water all of them before the end of today. Keyword, water. Did I end up watering them all? No. No, I did not. Out of the 100-ish potato seeds I planted, I did not water a single one. This is without a doubt my single biggest goof so far. I felt like a massive dum-dum. On day 23, I take a moment to water like 12 crops. I gotta say, I was feeling really good at this point. Mainly because I hadn't realized I messed up with the potato seeds yet, but also because I didn't have to spend a couple minutes watering my seeds. I find a fossilized tail in a loot box. Nice. We'll need this when we get to Ginger Island, so we got really lucky here. I head to Willy's and finally purchase the fiberglass rod. I probably should have bought this sooner, but I've been chilling while fishing up to this point, so I didn't really see a reason to. And now it is time for some more loot boxes. I'm mainly picking up artifacts, fish and seeds here, which honestly I'm good with. It's always nice getting seeds we can plant in the coming seasons, we can sell the fish for money, and artifacts are always a great find. I get a mummified frog, which is another item we can use when we get to Ginger Island. Rather than going to the mines, I'm going to continue focusing, focusing, <laughs> focusing on getting to fishing level 9 for a while. We have a strawberry harvest on day 24, then I spend the entire day fishing. I also sold a ton of items including almost all of our fish. Our financial situation has just improved tenfold. Wait, no, it's not actually tenfold, is it? No, because it's not ten times as much as it- is it? Wait, how much did I have? Wait, uh, we have a lot more money now is what I'm trying to get at. Day 25. We are approaching the end of spring now and I'm feeling pretty happy with how we've been doing. Aside from the potato seeds blunder, I think we've made some decent progress in our first season. Also, I did some more fishing. Can I just point out actually that if it doesn't rain before the end of spring, then all of this fishing was basically for nothing. You see, that will mean we won't be able to catch the legend fish. I'm going to be optimistic here though. I really, really do hope it rains soon. I harvest some potatoes on day 26. This was a very bittersweet moment. By this point, I had realized the other 100 or so potato seeds won't be ready on time. So while I was grateful for this harvest, it was very upsetting knowing that this would be our final potato harvest for spring. I go all in on the mines today. I begin on floor 105, making it to floor 113 at around 6.30pm. With only 7 floors remaining, I push forward, reaching floor 118 at 12.30am. I collect a diamond and immediately go down a ladder. I was getting really nervous at this point, so I made three cherry bombs and threw them on the ground. 
The ladder was revealed and I went down it as fast as I could, finally making it to floor 120. I receive the skull key as a reward. Sweet. I, I say sweet a lot actually, now that I think about it. I've said it so many times already, I think. Anyway, we have managed to make it all the way through the mines before the end of spring. Not bad. Not bad at all. The good news keeps on coming as we receive almost 13,000 gold for the potatoes we shipped. I decide to spend day 27 clearing out some more space on the farm. I mainly focus on chopping down trees because I really need wood. Day 28, the final day of spring. I send my axe to Clint through the mail. I gotta say, the mail services mod is so handy. It's going to be slightly difficult going back to not using that mod when this playthrough is over. I purchase a radish and a rare seed from the traveling cart, then I spend the rest of the day fishing in the forest. Unfortunately, it still isn't raining, so the probability of us being able to catch the legend before the end of the year has just dropped significantly. But there's still a chance. If we can get our hands on magic bait, we can use it to catch the fish at any time. There's two ways we can get magic bait. The first requires us to make it to Ginger Island, collect 100 golden walnuts, unlock the walnut room, complete a quest for Mr. Key, and use the key gems we get as a reward to purchase magic bait. That is going to take a lot of effort. I don't know if I have that in me. The other way is to get magic bait in a loot box. This would be so much easier, but we're basically relying on getting lucky, so I don't know how realistic this method is. But anyway, that is the end of spring. I'm really enjoying the whole loot box aspect so far, and I'm excited to see what we get in future seasons. So, I will see you all in summer. Alright, day 29, the first day of summer. A new season full of opportunity. Let's make the most of it. I begin by clearing out my field of old crops in preparation for the new seeds that will be planted later on. Speaking of which, it's off to Piri the Platypus to buy 5 of each summer seed, 10 wheat seeds, 50 corn seeds, and around 200 melon seeds. The melon seeds will be our money maker, we need 10 wheat for the community center and we need 5 gold star melons and corn for the community center too. I return to the farm to plant all of my seeds. It takes quite a while but I manage to get everything except the corn seeds planted and watered. I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting iron ore so we can make more quality sprinklers. Clint sends us our copper axe on day 30. Also, the mail services mod is officially a banger of a mod. Like I cannot emphasize this enough, this mod has made working on my friendships with the villagers so much easier. If the creator of this mod is watching this video, thank you. You have made my life so much better. Now it is time for a loot box opening. The first loot box contains an artifact and 16 pepper seeds. We're starting off well, that is delightful to see. Also, somebody has broken a loot box. If I catch the person that did this, I'm going to turn all of their socks inside out to slightly inconvenience them. I'm not playing around here. We are still able to pick up the items though, which I am very thankful for because one of those items is a Nautilus shell which we need for the community center. We get blueberry seeds and an artifact in the next loot box which has become somewhat of a trend so far. I head to the beach where a cutscene with Alex plays. I tried to watch this cutscene but I could not take my eyes off the loot box in the middle of the beach. So I ended up skipping the cutscene because I was way too excited. This one contained another ancient seed. I donate a mineral to the museum, then I receive Alex's bat. Ordinarily this isn't obtainable, so it's pretty cool that the mod adds items like this to the loot boxes. Next we receive a radioactive ore and another ancient seed. Again, this is a really good find. We need to ship a radioactive ore for the shipping collection, and ancient seeds are always welcome. Our good luck gets even better as we find a void egg. When I build a coop and upgrade it twice, I can put this egg into the incubator and a void chicken will hatch from it. I return to the farm to make yet another chest and empty my inventory. I also open a loot box on the farm which provides us with a bee house. We have been getting some really useful items today, I am over the moon with how this has gone. As always, we finish our loot box run with a trip around the forest. Again, we are getting really, really lucky here. I pick up a keg and red cabbage seeds almost immediately. 
I also get two wilted bouquets, which I'm never going to use. In case anyone doesn't know, you can give the wilted bouquet to a villager in order to break up with them. That isn't something I'm ever going to do, because I'm going to ask Krobus to be my roommate instead of romancing a villager. I am simply not interested in any of them. And Krobus is, like, really cool, so it's, a, it's an easy choice to make, really. Back on the farm, I make quite a few more quality sprinklers and get to work on planting all of the seeds I can. This includes the 50 corn seeds I bought yesterday. I did not have time to water any of the new seeds, but that's not really a big deal. At the beginning of day 31, I clear a path to a loot box on the farm. I receive amaranth seeds and a gold... Br 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 I'm, look, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that word. It's, it's a big light thingy. I don't know how... I can't say that word. Up at the train tracks, I receive some forage items and a pepper. Again, I don't really mind getting things like these. I can give them to the villagers or just sell them eventually. I, I don't know why, but I've kept like 95% of the items I've collected during this playthrough so far. I should probably sell them at some point. Anyway, I collect some fruit in the bat cave, then it's off to the community center to donate a bunch of items. I cannot describe how good it feels being able to donate all of these items this early. I head back to the farm to throw some new items into the shipping bin, then it's off to the beach where I spend the rest of the day fishing. On day 32, I continue the fishing expedition. I begin in the forest, then I move up to the mountain lake. I've already missed the legend fish, so I really don't want to miss any other fish. I head to floor 20 of the mines where I catch a ghost fish and a stone fish, then I move down to floor 60 and catch the ice pip. Finally, it's off to floor 100 where I capture the lava eel. I'm gonna be honest, I did not think that would go as well as it did. We caught all of the fish you can catch in the mines without any hassle at all, really. I am feeling absolutely sterling right now. I set up my crab pots at the town river again. Hopefully nobody destroys the chest this time. Then I head to the saloon. Emily asks me if I believe in fate. Honestly, the answers you can give here are very extreme. I'm sort of in between the first two answers, really. I think for the most part, we definitely do have full control over our lives. But I also think that fate is a real thing. Like, a beautiful thing, too, because... The way I view fate is, like, an entirely positive thing. Like, have you ever had a moment where you thought to yourself, I have no idea how I got so lucky and ended up in this position. Like, for all intents and purposes, I should not be in this position right now, where I've got this good thing or this amazing person in my life. Yeah, it's moments like that that make me believe that fate is real. Moments where something that you never could have imagined happening has happened. Like, against all odds, it has happened. It is real and it makes you the happiest you've ever been. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. I got a bit carried away there. My apologies. Let's move on. Day 33 is a day filled with monkey shines. I had no idea that was a word until someone in the comment section mentioned it. Shout out to that person because that is a phenomenal word. I love it so much already. I begin by harvesting some wheat, which also provides us with hay. I head to the traveling cart where things we need for the shipping collection are being sold, but I'm not in a rush to get them, so I'll just save my money for now. I do purchase a common mushroom for the community center, though. I chop down some trees, then I grab the chair from my house. I return to the forest and use this chair to get into the secret woods without breaking the log in front of the entrance. I did this to see if loot boxes can spawn in the secret woods, and it turns out they can. I did it for the sake of science, basically. That's, that's my excuse. I also used this as an opportunity to get some hardwood and catch the wood skip. I head to the beach and repair the broken bridge using 300 pieces of wood. This unlocks the tide pool area. There are three benefits associated with this. Number one, we can collect forage items here. Number two, the crimson fish can only be caught in this area. And number three... I assume loot boxes can spawn here, so now we can actually get to those in the future. I head to the saloon and talk to all of the villagers there, then I donate the wood skip to the community center. Our hot peppers are ready for harvest on day 34. I donate some artifacts to the museum, check on my crab pots, and ask Clint to crack open some geodes. I donate several items to the museum, receive 9 pumpkin seeds as a reward, and head to Willie's shop where I don't buy anything because he is not there. That is disappointing. 
I wanted to buy the lead bobber before I tried to catch the crimson fish. Regardless, I make my way over to the area the crimson fish spawns in and completely and utterly fail to catch it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That was one of the worst attempts I've ever made at catching a fish. I bump into William as I leave the beach and I can't stay mad at him. This is the first time he has ever let me down, so we're good. No hard feelings. It is what it is. I do a bit of fishing to catch a Dorado. I'm very happy about that. Very happy indeed. On day 35, you will notice that my bank account is looking nice and juicy. That is because I finally convinced myself to sell some of the items I have been keeping. Not a lot though. I'm still working on fixing my habit of keeping literally everything I find, just in case I need it in the future. I head to Robins and ask her to build a coop for us. After leaving Robins, I turn around and go back into her shop, purchase 50 wood and use it to make a chest. I buy some bait and two crab pots from Willy and set them up at the beach. And that's all I did today, for some reason I must have been feeling incredibly lazy. I harvest an ancient fruit and some poppies on day 36. I believe that is the first ancient fruit we have harvested, which is always a big moment for me in every playthrough. I send a diamond to Gus for his birthday because, well, it's Gus. Like, he's just a really good person and deserves a nice birthday present, there's no other reason. I donate a chicken statue to the museum, then I spend the rest of the day in the mines collecting iron and gold ore. Gustavo visits us on day 37 and gives us the mini jukebox. I am absolutely elated right now, I love the mini jukebox so much. Our red cabbage is ready for harvest which makes me even happier. Normally I end up getting red cabbage seeds from the traveling cart around the end of fall and donate the red cabbage to the community center during winter so this is a very nice change. I receive some lovely items from the loot boxes in the town center. Ginger, a seed maker, an oil maker, starfruit seeds, an artifact. And those four loot boxes were really, really close to each other too. I had a feeling summer was going to be a good season for us, but it has completely surpassed any and all expectations I had. And it's only the ninth day of summer too. There's still plenty of time left. I put an ancient fruit into a seed maker and continue opening loot boxes. I'm actually going to drive myself crazy with how often I say the word loot box, but I have to keep saying it. I have to commit to the bit. If I stop saying loot box, then I might as well end the playthrough right now because of how disappointed I will be in myself for not having the strength to keep saying it. I make a few donations to the community center, then I continue opening loot boxes. Okay, I... At this point, I would like to apologize if anyone is getting annoyed with me saying loot box over and over again, but I, I can't stop now. I get a radioactive stone in a loot box. I don't know what to do with this. I was hoping I would be able to place it on the ground and break it to get some radioactive ore, but nope. I just have a big lump of radioactive stone. I collect some row, which is good. I need to ship that. Our final loot box of the day contains the fossilized leg, which will come in handy on Ginger Island. Day 38. I donate a bottle of wine to the community center and a dwarf scroll to the museum. That is three of the four scrolls donated. One more and we will be able to talk to the dwarf and become their friend. I ask Clint to crack open some geodes, make some more donations to the museum and spend the rest of the day in the mines. As you may have guessed, I collected iron and gold ore. Our summer spangles are ready for harvest on day 39. I love these flowers, they're very pretty. Also, today is when the luau takes place. I add a gold star ice pip to the soup and spend some time interacting with the villagers. You know, because I care about them all just so much. It's it's totally not because I'm just trying to get maximum hearts with everyone as soon as I can. Okay, okay, no, yeah, yeah it is. I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. Anyway, uh, not important. The ice pip gets us the best reaction from the governor, which means we get even more friendship points with the villagers. Day 40 is hops, tomatoes and peppers collection day. It looks like our melons will be ready tomorrow too, so things are going pretty nicely for us, which is, you know, nice. I visit the traveling cart, purchase absolutely nothing, then go to bed so I can go to... <laughs> that, no, that's not even funny. Uh, then I go to bed so I can skip to tomorrow and harvest my melons. Speaking of, on day 41, I harvest my melons. It felt so good harvesting all of them. I need to buy more, like 500 more, at least. I donate a melon and five gold star melons to the community center, then I sell the rest to Pierre. 
I used our newfound fortune to purchase an apple tree sapling and 500 melon seeds. I love this game so much. When things go well, it's like having a constant stream of happiness flowing through my body. I ask Robin to upgrade the coop, donate a couple of items to the community center, plant my apple tree sapling and make quality sprinklers. I spend the rest of the day planting my melon seeds. Thankfully I managed to get all of them planted before the day ends. And because it's raining, I didn't even have to water them. I am having too much good luck right now. I'm suspicious. Normally that means bad things are about to happen, but you know what, I'm a different person now. I'm going to embrace this good luck and hope it continues. In fact, no, I'm not going to hope it continues. I know it's going to continue. I am manifesting it. I donate a blueberry to the community center on day 42. I purchased the iridium rod from Willy so I can attach the lead bobber to it. And now, it is vengeance time. The crimson fish embarrassed me the last time I tried to catch it. But this time, this time the exact same thing happened. Also, my first lead bobber was entirely used up, so I went to attach the second one to my fishing rod and it wasn't in my inventory. This was quite the kerfuffle. No need to panic though, because it turns out I put it into the chest beside my crab pots by mistake. What can I say? Once a scallywag, always a scallywag. I buy another lead bobber just to be safe and prepare for battle once more. To the surprise of absolutely everybody, including myself, I actually caught the crimson fish. If there was an award for the best Stardew Valley player of all time, I would not win it. But I feel like I would be one of the nominees. Actually, no I wouldn't. It took me like four in-game years to achieve perfection without mods. I... I, I don't know where I'm going with this. If I'm, if I'm being completely honest, I've actually just hurt my own feelings. I feel pretty sad right now. Um... Uh, yeah, I, I throw a green bean and a blackberry into kegs before I, uh, before I go to bed. Day 43 is spent clearing space on the farm. I can already tell I'm going to end up using the few bombs I have to take down some trees at some point because I'm too lazy to chop them all down myself. Day 44 is loot box day. We get tea leaves in the first one. At the risk of sounding like a broken record, nice. We need that for the shipping collection. Also, I find pineapple seeds in another loot box. This takes some of the pressure off us because now we don't have to rely on finding them on Ginger Island in order to complete the shipping collection. Also, I've been thinking about how the items in the loot boxes might not be useful after we complete the community center and the museum. I believe what I'm going to do is when I complete two of my goals, I will change the settings of the loot boxes. I will increase the maximum amount... Oh, I don't... I don't know if I can say those two words together. It, like, it might be physically impossible for me to do it. Let me, I'm going to take it really slow and we're going to see what happens. I will increase the maximum amount of items... Oh, I did it! In a loot box by one, increase the amount of gold we get from each loot box and increase the probability of getting a rare item just a little bit. This way, the loot boxes won't become useless, basically. With that being said, if I feel like we're getting too many good items or too much gold from loot boxes, then I'll tone it down. Basically, I'll try to keep it balanced throughout the entire playthrough. And I will do this every time we complete two goals. It's also extra incentive for us to complete our goals too, so I think it's a good idea all round. Our corn is ready for harvest on day 45. I also collect a star fruit and some blueberries. It's also at this point that I decide to stop keeping everything I've gathered so far. My mentality was I wanted to keep all of the items just in case I need them for crafting and cooking recipes next year. But there's really no need for me to worry about any of that right now. And we're missing out on a ton of gold by keeping these items, so I throw quite a few things into my shipping bin. I get a couple of slimejack fish and a deluxe scarecrow from a loot box, which I'm happy about. I need to find another way of saying something made me happy. This playthrough is really testing my vocabulary, I won't lie. I donate a corn, a pepper and five gold star corn to the community center. The rest of the day, as well as days 46 through 50, are spent in the mines collecting iron and gold ore, and clearing out space on the farm. A few notable things did happen during that period of time. I used the gold I got from selling a bunch of items to purchase all of the bundles in the vault room. This means the desert is unlocked. That is exquisite news. Gunther pays a visit to the farm and gives us the key to the sewers as a reward for donating 60 items to the museum. Now we can meet Krobus and start increasing our friendship with him. Also, I finally interact with the dwarf for the first time. 
I purchased two crocuses from the traveling cart, one for the shipping bin and one for the community center. Finally, it is time to purchase some animals for our farm. Please welcome Gil Thunder and Hawk the chickens and Bon the duck. I also ask Robin to build a barn for us. Alright, we are back to normal on day 51. More importantly, it is loot box time. I'm gonna be honest, I have nothing left to ramble about while I open these loot boxes. I'm sure I'll have new topics to talk about during fall, but for now my head is empty and my brain cells have gone on vacation. The trend of receiving artifacts, fish and seeds continues with the odd piece of furniture thrown in every once in a while. I do get another tea leaf which I can throw into a keg to make green tea so this was a successful run. I also get some ginger which is another good pickup. I finally watch Caroline's two heart cutscene which means she will send us the crafting recipe for tea saplings tomorrow morning. I get an orange in a loot box. I don't know why but I found that funny when it happened. This was a really interesting one though. I got a spookfish, a snake skull which will be useful on Ginger Island and a slime ball. I can't do anything with the slime ball as far as I know, but it's still a cool find. Our final loot box of summer gives us a grape starter, a hot pepper and two anchovies. Anchovies? Anchovies? I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, any whomst, we get our first eggs on day 52. I did not mean to make that sound. Um, yeah, we get our first eggs on day 52, so this is my favorite day so far because of that. I donate several items to the museum, ask Clint to crack open some geodes, donate more items to the museum, ask Clint to crack open more geodes, donate more items, ask Clint to open more geodes and donate one more item to the museum. I am so glad I said all of that without messing up. I did not want to have to record me saying that again. Pierre's shop is still closed on Wednesdays. Just a quick update for you all in case anyone has forgotten. I know I certainly did. I donate a poppy, a maple syrup and a pomegranate to the community center, then I plant my ancient seeds. I head into the forest and put wooden paths to connect some trees to a chest after placing tappers on the trees. Now the oak resin that is produced by these trees will automatically go into the chest. Just in case anybody wants to do this, you need to have the generic mod config menu mod installed. Say that three times fast. I'll have a link to this mod in the description. Scroll to the bottom of the settings menu and you will see an option called mod options. Click on this option, then click on automate at the top of the list. Under the enabled connectors heading, you can select what flooring or paths can be used to connect things to a chest. I really hope that made sense. Also, I realized that the trees in the forest are pine trees, so I moved the tappers and chest to the bus stop so I can get oak resin from the two oak trees here. All of our melons are ready for harvest on day 53. Collecting all of them took a bit of time, but it was so incredibly satisfying. I sell every crop in my inventory to Pierre and purchase 25 wheat seeds. I need more wheat for the community center. I buy the final backpack upgrade and ask Robin to upgrade our coop for the final time. I plant the wheat seeds, visit Sandy in the desert, purchase 5 beet and rhubarb seeds, and enter the skull caverns. I used to be terrible at going through this place, but I've done it so many times in the last few playthroughs that I am officially at the point where I am not terrible at it. With enough practice, I believe I can eventually become alright at going through the skull cavern. A void chicken has appeared in our coop on day 54. I call it Jeff. In a perfect world, that is the name I would give to my pet giraffe in Stardew Valley, but alas, there are no giraffes in Stardew Valley. That is deeply upsetting. I decide to connect the maple tree at the bus stop to the chest so I can get maple syrup as well as the two oak resin. I watch a cutscene that shows a bunch of crabs in Willy's shop. Gus shows up and says he'll take care of the crabs. Gus then tells us that he'll be having a special offer on crab cakes for the next few days. I do a bit of fishing and catch the red snapper. Then I purchase two lead bobbers and run to the saloon where I buy 50 crab cakes. Eating one of these gives you a plus one speed boost for basically the entire day, so it's worth buying a good few of them when they're on sale. I head to the sewers because I want to catch our second legendary fish, the mutant carp. It took so long for this fish to show up, like a really, really long time. But thankfully, it eventually did. I rendezvous with my friends in the saloon at the end of the night. I ask Robin to upgrade our barn on day 55. Then I spend 10,000 gold on grass starter. I did not realize it would cost that much. I regret that purchase. Francis the rabbit has joined our family. Let's all give him a warm welcome. 
And of course, we can't forget about Lovejoy the cow either. To end the day, I head to the desert where I catch a sandfish and the scorpion carp. Day 56, the final day of summer. The first thing I do is harvest the wheat that has grown. I also harvest a pineapple. Today is already a sensational day just because of that. I donate 10 wheat to the community center and purchase a battery pack and red cabbage seeds from the traveling cart. Before summer ends, I want to give you all an update on the progress we have made in certain areas. First, we have the shipping collection. The loot boxes have really helped with this. There are quite a few items here that we wouldn't have gotten and been able to ship if we hadn't found them in loot boxes. A lot of the things we still have to ship are forage items, crops, and animal products. I am a bit worried about the radioactive bar and the banana. For the radioactive bar, I need to unlock Mr. Key's walnut room and hope we get the quest that changes the mines or the skull caverns so we can get access to radioactive ore in either of those two locations. For the banana, I need to unlock the island trader, collect five dragon teeth in the volcano dungeon, swap the dragon teeth for a banana tree sapling, and plant the sapling. Banana trees take 28 days to grow, so we need to get to Ginger Island by the middle of fall at the latest if we want to make sure we get a banana before the end of the year. Next we have the fishing collection. There's not much to say about this one. It isn't really affected by the loot boxes because finding a fish in a loot box does not add it to the collection. We still need to physically catch every fish. But we are doing pretty well. Like I said at the end of spring though, we do need to catch the legend fish after we missed it during spring, but we are good for everything else. In terms of the museum collection, this is the area that was affected by the loot boxes the most in my opinion. We're already pretty close to completing this collection thanks to all of the minerals and artifacts we found in loot boxes. I'm gonna go on record and say that we are 100% going to complete this collection before the end of winter, maybe even before the end of fall, we'll see. In terms of the community center, we need a large goat milk or a piece of wool. Either one will do here because we only have to donate one more item to complete this bundle. Once our barn has been upgraded, I will buy a goat and that will take care of this one. We need a pumpkin and an eggplant, which we can easily get in fall. That also applies to the hazelnut. We need one more fish, the tiger trout. Again, this is something we can get in fall. For the truffle, all I have to do is upgrade my barn one more time and purchase a pig, so that's really handy. If I upgrade my house, I'll have access to the kitchen and I will be able to make a fried egg and a mackie roll. I planted an apple tree sapling during summer, so we'll get the three apples we need during fall. The tappers I set up will give me an oak resin in a few days, and I've got a rabbit, so that covers the rabbit's foot. Finally, I also have a duck, so that's the duck feather sorted. So I would say things are looking really good for us right now. I know we've only just finished summer, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that the loot boxes do have quite a big effect on a playthrough. I kinda saw that coming, but I didn't think it would be this good. Anyway, summer was a fantastic season for us. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens during fall. Day 57, the first day of fall. We begin with a little corn harvest, which is a nice way to start a new season. I pick up some eggs in the coop, one of which is a void egg. I toss this void egg into the mayonnaise machine to make void mayonnaise, then I plant some ancient seeds. I head to Piers and purchase 5 of each fall seed and 687 pumpkin seeds. I do a bit of fishing at the river and catch the tiger trout. Then I move up to the area behind Georgia Mart for some more fishing. A legendary fish called the angler appears in this location. This is probably the easiest legendary fish to catch, so that's very nice for us. I return to pier and sell my corn, then I spend the rest of the day planting the seeds I bought. It took the entire day, but I got almost everything planted. I didn't get everything watered, but just like last season, that's not a big deal. I plant the remaining seeds on the morning of day 58. It's raining too, which means I don't have to water these ones. I open my first loot box and receive a mineral and a furnace. You know what? I will gratefully accept that furnace. The wizard would like some ectoplasm, so we will get that for him in the near future. The next four items we receive from loot boxes are a moral, an oyster, a yam seed, and a ruby. Next, I get a suit of armor and a sandfish. I have so many decorations, I really need to start using them. We pick up a radioactive ore, sweet. 
a stone owl and some boots are added to her inventory, followed by a duck mayonnaise. I pick up a hazelnut for the community center and donate that, and the tiger trout. Every fishing bundle has now been completed. Also, the crafts room has been completed. I catch a walleye at the river, then I take a walk through the forest where the remaining loot boxes provide us with fish, a blue jazz, a winter root, and a coral. Finally, I catch a midnight carp before the day ends. I collect an oak resin on day 59, then I donate some items to the museum, and I donate the oak resin to the community center. Also, I accidentally skipped the cutscene where Willy gives us the copper pan, so I'm going to reenact that scene. Ahem. <clears throat> All right, Willie. How, how are you? How are you getting on? Uh, not too bad yourself. I'm feeling good, thank you. H how are you? Ah, uh, sure. I I can't complain. Anyway, listen. Here is a copper pan. Oh, yeah. Cheers, mate. Sound. No bother, man. You can use <laughs> you can use that to collect some treasure from water sources. Oh, sweet. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, go away now. Stop talking to me. Good luck. Go on away now. Go on away. Go on. Good luck now. Go on. Go on away. I head into the mines where I get an ectoplasm almost immediately. That took a lot less time than I thought it would. I'll bring it to the wizard and that will be his special order completed. I do a bit of fishing at the beach to catch some more fall fish. The wizard sends us the crafting recipe for the mini obelisk on day 60 as a reward for completing his special order. Also, Linus sends us a Mackie roll. This is actually really good timing, I can bring this to the community center. I do want to point out though that Linus said, and I quote, The mountain lake has been kind to me lately. I would like to share my good fortune with you. Did he find this Mackie roll in the lake? I mean, if, if so, if he actually did that, he is the single greatest forager that has ever lived. I donate the Mackie roll, then I buy a new goat for our farm. I call them Mellow. Then I went to sleep. Yeah, it was, it was one of those lazy days again. All right, day 61. We begin with a corn harvest. The bok choys are also ready. I take a look at the traveling cart hoping to find a truffle, but it's not being sold, which is a little upsetting to be honest with you. I sell my corn to Pierre, then I ask Clint to crack open our geodes. We're now at the point where it'll be more beneficial for us to trade our omni geodes for artifact troves in the desert and crack them open instead. So I'm going to try to get a solid 15 to 20 artifact troves during the next couple of weeks. Some more fishing is on the agenda as I catch a sea cucumber, I give Elliot a crab cake for his birthday, then I throw the items I've collected today into the shipping bin. As well as this, I throw some other items into the shipping bin too. Quite a few items actually. I pick up a piece of wool in the coop and deliver it to the community center. I pick up a duck feather on day 62. I also arrive at Robin's way too early so I just kinda stand outside awkwardly and just wait for her shop to open. I must admit, my time management skills are astronomically poor. I finally enter her shop and watch a cutscene in which Robin gives us the crafting recipes for the flute block and the drum block. I also ask her to upgrade our barn. As soon as it's finished, I'm going to buy a pig because we really, really need to get a truffle as soon as we can for the community center. I donate a duck feather, purchase a pail from Marnie and milk my cow. I'm gonna be honest here. I was really excited for our next round of loot boxes, so the rest of today, as well as day 63 and 64, were spent clearing out the farm and doing basically nothing else. On day 65, I pick up all of the items that I've accumulated in the coop. I need quite a few of these for the shipping collection, so that was a lovely start to the day. Our cranberries, amaranth and eggplants have grown, so I harvest those, then I open the first loot box. We get kale, an egg and a bean starter. I also found a loot box that was hiding behind the barn. If there's one thing that I've learned from this playthrough so far, it's that I really need to pay close attention to my surroundings or I'm guaranteed to miss a few loot boxes. Also, I think the game has caught on to the fact that I love using lead bobbers while I'm fishing because I got one in a loot box. Coral, garlic and an egg are found in the next loot box, followed by another egg, a mineral, yam seeds, spring seeds, a plum and a common mushroom. I take a quick break from loot box hunting to accept a quest from Demetrius. He wants us to catch 10 tiger trout. That's actually a nice and easy quest. Back to loot boxes now and we pick up another furnace in this one. Also, I feel really happy when I find more than one of a crop or a flower in a loot box. It's such a beautiful sight every time. 
I pick up Hyper Speed Grow, which is an item you can normally only get in the later stages of the game, so that is stupendous. It's off to the beach now, where we find one loot box in the main area, but there isn't one in the tide pool area, unfortunately. Some more oak resin is ready, so I collect that, then I sprinkle the Hyper Speed Grow on the rear seed I planted. We get a slime ball in the first loot box we open in the forest, followed by a spookfish in the next loot box. I like the design of that fish, so I'm always happy when I see it. Sam's old guitar makes an appearance for the second time, I believe. Yeah, we got this in a loot box in summer too. I should clarify, it's a weapon. Unfortunately, it isn't of much use to us at this point though. I do a lap around the forest to find the remaining loot boxes, and I must say, I love this routine. I always feel so relaxed walking around this forest, you know, my soul feels at peace. So the fact that I can open loot boxes while I'm doing it just makes it even better. To finish off the day, I donate a rabbit's foot to the community center along with an eggplant. Day 66. I visit Robin's first thing in the morning and ask her to upgrade her house so I can make a fried egg. Now I have some absolutely heartbreaking news for you all. Somebody has destroyed our chest at the bus stop. At this point, I'm starting to wonder if some of these villagers simply do not like me. But that doesn't make too much sense because I've been giving everyone gifts every week and birthday presents and doing quests for them and talking to them. I've basically been doing everything I can for them. They're being a bit ungrateful, in my opinion. Anyway, with our barn upgraded, I head to Marnie's and ask her to add a pig to our farm. I call this pig Bigby. I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing. I want to catch tiger trout for Demetrius's quest. I did the same thing on day 67. I also went around talking to the villagers. Not to increase my friendship with them, though, no, not at all. You see, I was investigating the case of a destroyed chest. I wanted to get to the bottom of things and find out who was doing it. I came to the conclusion that literally nobody in this town can be trusted except for Gus, Willy, Marnie, Krobus, and the dwarf. Everybody else has been added to my list of enemies. Some pumpkins are ready for harvest on day 68, along with our fairy roses and yams. I purchase a rare crow and a beet at the traveling cart, sell most of my crops to Pierre, buy back some gold star pumpkins for Krobus, and donate a pumpkin to the community center. The pantry room has been fully completed, which means we have unlocked the greenhouse. That's good. In fact, I would say it is very good. But I am getting really nervous about the truffle. I need to complete the community center and unlock Ginger Island before the end of fall if I want to have a chance of getting a banana and completing the shipping collection. So we might be in a little bit of trouble, depending on how long it takes us to get this truffle. I send my pickaxe to Clint so he can upgrade it, and that's it for today. Day 69 is a beautiful day. I collect a piece of wool which I need for the shipping collection, and I plant red cabbage, rhubarb, and beet seeds in the greenhouse, also for shipping purposes. With our house upgraded, I cook a fried egg, then I get to work on harvesting all of the pumpkins that have grown. Also, our apple tree has produced its first apple. Beautiful stuff. That means we'll have the three apples we need on day 71. I sell my crops to Pierre, which bumps us up to almost 300,000 gold. I purchase a full stack of pumpkin seeds, donate the fried egg, ask Robin to build a pond on the farm, and begin planting all of the pumpkin seeds I bought. Unsurprisingly, I do not get all of them planted before the day ends. Clint sends us her pickaxe on day 70. I plant the rest of the pumpkin seeds, then I send my axe to Clint so he can upgrade that too. After all of the gold I've given to Clint, I really, really hope he doesn't do something to ruin our day in this playthrough. He does it every time though, so my hopes are not high. I head to the Adventurer's Guild where I sell my Obsidian Edge Sword and purchase the Lava Katana. I also purchase 250 explosive ammo which I can use with my slingshot to get through the Skull Caverns quicker in the future. On day 71, I collect the two apples I need from our tree. I give the dwarf a present and purchase 50 mega bombs from him. I ask Robin to build a second pond on her farm, throw a sturgeon into the first pond, and head to the Skull Caverns. I'm mainly focusing on collecting Omni Geodes here. If I get something like a Prismatic Shard or a good bit of Iridium Ore, then I won't complain, obviously. But Omni Geodes are our main priority right now. Clinty Winty sends us our axe on day 72. More importantly though, it's everyone's favorite time of the week. It is loot box time. We get a gold bar, nice, that's a good start, followed by a baked fish. In an unfortunate turn of events though, we cannot open any more loot boxes today because it's time for the Stardew Valley Fair. I set up my Grange display and I think it looks pretty decent. We come in first place and receive a delicious 1000 star tokens. 
I make sure to collect my items from the Grange display, then I bet 999 tokens on green. I spin the wheel and it actually lands on green. I am shocked, honestly. I know the wheel is, like, rigged to land on green more than orange, but I've always had terrible luck with this wheel. Case in point, right now I bet 800 tokens on green and it lands on orange. That is unfortunate. Instead of continuing to lose my tokens on the wheel, I play the slingshot game over and over again until I reach around 2,500 tokens. Then again. Then one more time. Finally, I use my tokens to buy a rare crow and a star drop. With the Stardew Valley Fair over and done with, I donate three apples to the community center before going to sleep. Now, all I need is a truffle. Evelyn drops by the farm on day 73 and gives us the garden pot. I would like to add Evelyn to the list of villagers that I actually trust. She should have been there from the beginning, that's my bad. That one's on me. Next, it's time to resume our loot box collecting adventure. Our first one gives us a void egg and two normal eggs. I really do wish we got this at the start of the playthrough, they would have come in handy then. But I can still sell these now so it's all good. Our second loot box contains an artifact and three different seeds followed by a mineral and a loom at the beach. We don't have a loom actually now that I think about it so that's a useful item for us. I accept Willy's special order to collect 100 pieces of bug meat then I get some spaghetti in a loot box. Something really cool happened next. I found a golden walnut in a loot box. This is extremely interesting. I really wasn't expecting to find this in that loot box. It makes me wonder if we can get key gems in loot boxes too. I assume we can, so hopefully we get some soon and maybe we'll get some more walnuts too. Maybe? Hopefully? Please? I really would like that. I head to the mines where I spend the rest of the day collecting bug meat for Willy's special order. I ask Clint to upgrade my axe on day 74, then I do a quick lap around the forest to see if any more loot boxes have appeared. I did not find any. Oh well. It's back to the mines to continue working on Willy's special order. On day 75, our pig still has not found a truffle. Look, I really don't mean to sound impatient here, but I really, really need that truffle. So give me one soon, please, like really soon, like, like tomorrow soon. I throw a slime jack fish into the second pond and collect some milk from our cow and goat before clearing out the coop. I really need to pick up an item called the auto grabber. It'll collect everything for us so we won't have to milk our animals and clean up the coop. I head to Robins and ask her to build a shed. I'll put all of the chests on the farm into this at some point, probably during winter though because there's quite a few things I still have to do before the end of this season. Once again, it is off to the mines to finish collecting bug meat. Clint returns our axe to us on day 76, so I sent him my hoe so he can upgrade that too. A sweet gem berry is ready for harvest. Normally I would bring the first sweet gem berry I get to the old Master Cannoli statue in the secret woods. You can get a star drop by doing this. But because one of our goals for the first year is to complete the shipping collection, it's going to go into the shipping bin instead. I chop down the big log in front of the entrance to the secret woods, then I pick up a chanterelle. I'm glad I finally did this because now I can stop using my chair to get into the secret woods every time I go to collect hardwood. I purchase 50 salads in the saloon, then it's time for an adventure through the Skull Caverns. Again, our main goal here is to collect Omni Geodes and to hopefully get a dinosaur egg from a Pepper Rex. I collect some Slime Jack Row from a pond on day 77. I also still have not gotten a truffle. This is concerning at this point. A red cabbage is ready though, so I can toss that into the shipping bin. Once again, it's off to the Skull Caverns. I was doing pretty well until I got knocked out. I yeah, yeah, this one is on me. I, I wasn't paying attention at all, and I paid the price for it. I didn't lose any Omni Geodes, so I'm still counting this as a victory, but I was a bit embarrassed about the whole situation, so I, I made my way home and just went to sleep. Clint sends us our hoe on day 78. I immediately send it back to him to be upgraded again. Big B, I'm not playing games anymore. I need that truffle. I'm not like I'm not joking. This is serious. Give me that truffle. Any whomst, as you may have guessed, it is back to the Skull Caverns for yet another Omni Geode collection run. I'm spending quite a bit of time in here, but it will all be worth it when I trade my Omni Geodes for artifact troves. Fantastic news as our pig finally gives us a truffle on day 79. I feel so relieved right now. I was legitimately starting to think I wasn't going to get a truffle before the end of fall. I, I actually feel over the moon right now. 
I get some pretty cool stuff in our first loot box. I am especially pleased with the arrowhead artifact because that's something I haven't donated to the museum yet. The second loot box yields 4 deluxe speed grow. Sweet. While footage of me opening loot boxes and accepting a special order from the wizard plays, I would like to talk about my plan for Ginger Island. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, the last couple of days of fall are going to be very stressful. Like I said during summer, it takes 28 days for a banana tree to grow. So I need to have a banana tree planted before the final day of fall ends. My plan is simple, but there is very little room for error with this one. We cannot afford to make any mistakes. I need to get to Ginger Island, collect 10 golden walnuts to unlock the west side of the island, collect another 20 golden walnuts to unlock the island farmhouse, and collect a final 10 walnuts to unlock the island trader. I also need to collect 5 dragon tooth in the volcano dungeon. So basically I need to collect 40 golden walnuts in total and 5 dragon tooth. That's going to be tough, really tough, no doubt about that, but I'm going to be really optimistic here. I can do it. Well, I, I have to do it, really, because if I don't, then I'll fail the goal to complete the shipping collection, which wouldn't be good, I would actually start crying if that happened. I donate the truffle to fully complete the community center, then I head into the mines in search of a prismatic slime. I manage to find one and defeat it at the very last minute. Like, literally very last minute, too. It was 1.50am when I defeated it and obtained the prismatic jelly. On day 80, Mir Lewis sends us a letter thanking us for completing the bulletin board bundles. This is always a fantastic letter to receive, because it means we've also received two full hearts of friendship with the villagers. At this point, it's basically set in stone that we're going to reach maximum friendship with everybody. Except Leo. We basically have all of winter to get him from zero friendship hearts to ten. That's going to be really difficult, if not impossible for me. I'm not feeling confident about that friendship goal anymore. In fact, I think we might fail it. I toss a dinosaur egg into the incubator in the coop, harvest the rhubarb that has grown, and send my watering can to Clint. Next up is a pumpkin harvest. There are so many pumpkins on the farm, my serotonin levels are going through the roof right now. I head to the desert and exchange the omni geodes I've collected so far for artifact troves, then I watch the cutscene showing the grand reopening of the community center. It feels good to have completed it before winter, but all I'm focused on right now is getting to Ginger Island as quickly as possible. I sell my crops to Pierre, bumping our bank account up to a tasty 300,000-ish gold. I head to Clint's to ask him to crack open my artifact troves, but he won't do it, because he's upgrading my watering can. I completely forgot that was a thing. You know what? This is my fault. Clint actually didn't do anything wrong in this situation. Surprisingly enough, it wasn't on him, it's on me. I donate some artifacts to the museum, give the prismatic jelly to the wizard, and collect some items in the forest. It looks like somebody broke the loot box these were in, but we were still able to get them off the floor, thankfully. Next up is a trip to the secret woods to collect hardwood. I can't remember how much hardwood I have in total, so I'm really hoping this will get us to the magical number of 200 so we can repair the boat tomorrow. I also find a loot box in the secret woods. Even as we approach the end of fall, I still get really excited every time I open one of these things. Day 81 is another pumpkin harvest day. There's not as many as there was yesterday, but it's still nice to get some more. I chop down all of the logs on the farm to get more hardwood. By the end of this chopping session, I have around 140, but I'm sure I have more hardwood in one of the many, many, many chests on the farm. Another trip to the secret woods is on the table for, you guessed it, more hardwood. After finding some more hardwood in the chest, I've said hardwood quite a few times today, I apologize, I have a grand total of 196. We need 200 to repair the boat. This is not good. I sell my pumpkins to Pierre and head to Clint's to crack open my geodes, except I can't and I already made this mistake. Yesterday, in fact. Th that's actually kind of embarrassing that I made this mistake two days in a row. I donate the iridium bars and battery packs needed for the boat repair, but like I said, we don't have enough hardwood, unfortunately. I was so upset by this that I went to sleep. Clint sends us our watering can on day 82. I also found a log on my farm. This was here the entire time, which means I could have chopped it down and donated the hardwood yesterday. I'm not going to focus on that though, because if I do, I'll get really upset. So instead, I'm going to look at the positive in this situation. Now we have enough hardwood for the boat repair. I head to Clint's to finally have my artifact troves opened up, but he isn't there. 
you know what, I'm just going to move on. I'm not even going to give him any attention in this situation. I'm going to pretend this didn't happen. I don't care for Clint anymore. He doesn't exist in my mind. I bring the hardwood to Willie's shop, then I head to the saloon. The boat will be repaired tomorrow, so I have two days to collect 40 golden walnuts and five dragon tooth. I buy 100 coffees and 50 salads in preparation of the challenge I will be facing tomorrow. I toss a wheat, a melon and a garlic into seed makers to get their respective seeds. These will be used on Ginger Island. I also make five flute blocks which will also be used on Ginger Island. The final item on the agenda for today is purchasing 150 mega bombs from the dwarf. Day 83. The boat has been repaired so we can finally get to Ginger Island. Except we can't go into town because the Spirits Eve Festival is being set up. But it's okay. You see, going through town to get to Willy's shop was plan A. Now, it's time for plan B. I make a beach warp totem and use it to teleport to the beach. I head into Willy's and finally travel to Ginger Island. Alright, no messing around. Let's get down to brass tacks. It is of vital importance that I make zero mistakes during the next two days. I need to do this absolutely flawlessly. Complete and utter precision and efficiency. I collect a walnut in the forest, then I guess where every gem involved in the puzzle goes. This does take a bit of time, but I do get it correct and receive 5 golden walnuts. I hit the tree in Leo's treehouse with my axe to receive another, then I talk to the parrot to unlock the northern section of the island. Along the way to the volcano, I make sure to grab every walnut I come across. I am using every single neuron in my brain right now, every brain cell has been activated and is working in complete unison. Armed with my mega bombs, salads, coffees and crab cakes, I power my way through the volcano dungeon. I avoid most of the enemies besides a monster called the Lava Lurk. These monsters can drop a dragon tooth when defeated, so I make sure to take care of them every time I see them. Using mega bombs to blow up rocks gives us a few walnuts. The crab cakes combined with coffee also gives us a plus two speed boost. I find the skeleton area, I'm not entirely sure how to describe it, but basically there's a good chance of getting at least one dragon tooth here, which is exactly what I get in this situation. I'm under quite a bit of pressure here, but the thing is, pressure creates diamonds. I'm not calling myself a diamond, that's really arrogant, I would never do that. What I will say is that I'm making my way through the dungeon quite quickly, which I'm very thankful for. I've also collected a good few walnuts along the way. At almost 11pm, I reach the end of the dungeon. I collect two more walnuts here, bringing us up to a total of 21, and I receive a prismatic shard. I believe this is my third prismatic shard. I think I got two more during my adventures in the Skull Caverns. I will have to double check that though when I have more time in the future. I unlock the west side of the island and collect a few more walnuts before I pass out. At the end of the day, I currently have 16 walnuts. So tomorrow I need to collect 14 more and get 3 more dragon tooth. I'm quite happy with how today went honestly, that takes a bit of pressure off of us. But make no mistake about it, tomorrow is still going to be pretty stressful. But we can do it. I know we can. Day 84, the final day of fall. I turn my coffees into triple shot espressos and immediately head to Ginger Island. I crack open muscle nodes to receive 2 golden walnuts, collect 1 in the shipwreck, collect one hidden in the sand, then another in the sand. I collect one from a bush, dig up another hidden one, defeat a group of tiger slimes, find a walnut in a bush, dig one up, find another in a bush, dig another up, and find one more in a bush to bring us up to a total of 30 golden walnuts. I spend 20 to unlock the farmhouse, then another 10 to unlock the island trader. Honestly, that was the hard part, so at this point I started to relax a bit. I head to the Volcano Dungeon where I obtain the Dragon Tooths... Dragon Teeth? This has happened before, I'm not sure what exactly the plural is. I'm gonna say Dragon Teeth. At this point I have all the Dragon Teeth I need, so I am feeling absolutely magnificent right now. At 8pm I head to the Island Trader and purchase a Banana Tree Sapling. I plant it on my farm and I breathe a massive sigh of relief. I head home and stand on my front porch as I take in the final night of fall. That was a very eventful season, we'll say. Considering everything that happened, I'm... Yeah, I I'm pretty happy with how it went. I would say we're in a really good position heading into winter. So, I will see you all then. Day 85. The first day of winter. The game has changed. We can no longer plant any crops here on our farm in Stardew Valley. 
We can plant winter seeds to get winter forage, but that's about it. I clear out the coop and I am very happy with the amount of items we have just picked up. All of these items get thrown into the shipping bin. I meet the shadow guy at the bus stop, I track him down to the bush beside the community center and receive the magnifying glass. Now that we have acquired this, we can start collecting secret notes. I head to Sandy Shop in the desert and purchase 100 beet seeds. I will plant these seeds on Ginger Island. You can collect 5 golden walnuts by harvesting crops on the farm there, hence why I purchased these seeds. I pick up some quality sprinklers on the farm, accept a special order from Gus to bring him 24 eggs, and head to Ginger Island. I clear out some space on the farm here and plant the beet seeds along with a garlic seed, a melon seed, and a wheat seed. Just before the day ends, I decide I want to give Krobus a gold star pumpkin for his birthday. I accidentally toss this pumpkin into a keg. I retrieve a second pumpkin and accidentally complete a quest from Caroline to give her a pumpkin. Third time is the charm as I finally manage to give Krobus a pumpkin on my third attempt. I send my watering can to Clint on day 86. Next, it's time for our first loot box opening of winter. We receive a blue discus, a mineral, a common mushroom, and an apricot in our first loot box. We get ginger ale in our second loot box. Drinking this gives a boost to our luck, so this should come in handy at some point in the future. Next, we get honey. That's it, just, just plain old honey. I take a quick break from loot box opening to start the wizard's quest before receiving eggplant parmesan, a salmon, and a melon seed. A pair of boots, a slime ball, and a basic log are next. That's another furniture item I will probably never use. Corn seeds, a uh, brazier... Oh, this happened in a previous season as well. I can't pronounce this. Brazier, I believe. Brazier? Brazier. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. An artifact, a lamppost, a mineral, a carp, more fish, and a green bean are added to our inventory. I make a stop in the saloon to drop off some eggs for Gus, not enough to complete his special order, but still quite a few. We receive milk, a blueberry, unmilled rice, a parsnip, two oysters, more boots, a pepper, a fish, mayonnaise, another apricot, another lamppost, squid ink ravioli, a fiddlehead fern, a parsnip, a flamingo, and a mayonnaise machine. I spend some time fishing at the river where I catch a perch and a lingcod. I head to the sewers and ask Krobus to unlock the entrance to the mutant bug lair. I catch the slime jack, open the chest at the end of the area, and receive the dark talisman. This is the item that unlocks the entrance to the next area we need to go to as part of the wizard's quest. I head to the wizard's tower because for some reason I thought the item I had to give him was the dark talisman. This is not the case. I have just wasted quite a bit of time. I want to end the day on a positive note rather than that little oopsie, so I head to the beach where I catch a squid and dig up the ground. This provides us with some winter forage. I make some winter seeds on the morning of day 87. I plant these, then I continue with the wizard's quest. I catch a void salmon in the witch's swamp, followed by a void mayonnaise. I give this void mayonnaise to the goblin henchman, enter the witch's hut, and collect the wizard's ink. I deliver the wizard's ink to the wizard, of course, completing his quest. Now we can purchase obelisks, the gold clock, and Junimo huts for our farm in his tower. Next on the agenda is a trip to Ginger Island. I catch a lionfish, then I open a loot box and receive two minerals, a spring seed, and a scythe. This is the first time I've seen a tool in a loot box. Does that mean we can get iridium tools in these? Hopefully we can get some if that's possible. It would be really cool to get an Iridium Axe or an Iridium Watering Can, for example. We would save money and we wouldn't have to use 5 Iridium Bars upgrading that tool. I catch a blue discus, open another loot box, then yet another loot box. And that is it for today. Clint sends our Watering Can back to us on day 88. I finally ask Robin to add a silo to the farm. It's a bit late, but I'm glad I remembered to pick this up in winter. Now we can make sure our animals will have plenty of hay to keep them fed during this season. I ask Clint to crack open some artifact troves and geodes, donate a good few items to the museum, and purchase a star drop from Krobus. I purchase four trout soups from Willy, catch the glacier fish, and send a duck feather to Leo. I purchase a rare seed from the traveling cart on day 89. I plant it in the greenhouse, then it's off to Ginger Island. I acquire a golden walnut, then I leave the island and make my way to the Skull Caverns instead. 
We've almost completed the museum collection at this point, so there's going to be a heavy focus on obtaining geodes during the next week or two. I also picked up an autograbber in a chest here. Sweet. I begin day 90 by placing the autograbber in the coop. I place a chest beside the autograbber so everything that it collects will be placed inside the chest. I ask Robin to build a shed on her farm. Just like pretty much every other Stardew Valley playthrough I've done, we're going to have at least two fully upgraded sheds full of kegs. The wine we produce in these sheds will help us raise enough gold to purchase the more expensive items we need to achieve perfection. I purchased 10 stacks of wood which will almost exclusively be used to make kegs in the future, but I do use some of it to make around 40 tappers. I also make some tree fertilizer. I head to the quarry and use bombs to clear the area out. Not only does this free up a ton of space here, but it also gives us quite a few secret notes. I plant all of the acorns I have, making sure to sprinkle fertilizer on them as I do. Finally, I connect the first few rows of trees to the nearby chest. When they're fully grown and I put tappers on them, all of the oak resin they produce will automatically go into that chest. Day 91 is spent in the Skull Caverns. I won't lie, I'm really beginning to love the Skull Caverns. It's actually pretty satisfying making my way through the floors now. I dig up an artifact on day 92. Clint wants us to defeat 50 bats, which is a nice and easy special order. I wanted to go to Ginger Island, but the Festival of Ice takes place today, so Willy's shop is closed, unfortunately. Pam, proving she is a beacon of dedication and commitment, is still willing to drive us to the desert. So I head there and dig up another artifact. It's off to the Festival of Ice for the rest of the day. I pick up a pumpkin soup from the traveling cart because it gives us some bonus luck when we eat it. As always, I do not allow myself to win the fishing competition. This victory is reserved exclusively for Willy. It would legitimately upset me so much if Lewis did not announce him as the winner. I find some fish and a flamingo in a loot box on day 93. I head into Clint's and crack open some geodes and artifact troves. I make a couple of donations to the museum, then it's back to the farm to open some more loot boxes. It feels like every time I get a baked fish in a loot box, it's the only item in that loot box. Interesting. It's off to the beach where I pick up a seed maker, a cockle, a sunflower, an anchovy, and a winter root. It's ginger island time now as I show the wheat, melon, and garlic I grew to the frog in the cave on our farm. This earns us 15 golden walnuts. I go home to pick up my flute blocks, then I return to Ginger Island to pay 20 golden walnuts to have the island resort built. I fish up a walnut from a little pond, dig up another walnut, dig up two artifact troves, and use my flute blocks to complete the mermaid's puzzle, earning another 5 walnuts. I dig up a walnut in the pirate cove, catch a stingray, and harvest the beets that have grown on our farm. This rewards us with another 5 walnuts. I get a chair, two shad, and a loom in a loot box, then I dig up yet another golden walnut and a pearl. I get cranberry seeds and a banana pudding in a loot box, and I think at this point it's safe to say that it's absolutely worth exploring Ginger Island for loot boxes. I unlock the bridge to the dig site area, free Professor Snail, and use bombs to break the rocks in this area. I donate two items to the field office, open another loot box, then I dig up another walnut along with an ostrich egg. I collect a few more walnuts before the day ends. The words golden walnut and loot box are going to haunt my nightmares. I cannot believe how many times I've said these words today alone. I'm... Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry that you all have to listen to me say those words so many times. I toss the ostrich egg into the shipping bin on day 94. Then I open another loot box. Also, I have collected a total of 80 walnuts at this point. I have a few ideas on how we can get more, so I think it's time for a little golden walnut hunting session. I collect one from a bush, earn two more by answering two questions at the field office, earn another two by donating some items in the same place, go fishing at the dig site to pick up the fossilized spine and try to get a golden coconut from a tree. I had no luck with this, unfortunately. I dig up a snake vertebrae on day 95, then I return to Pelican Town where I visit the quarry and put tappers on the oak trees that have grown. I harvest the winter forage that has appeared, make some more winter seeds, and plant all of them. A dinosaur egg has hatched, so I call our new baby dinosaur Feppa. Yeah, I accidentally clicked on the default name it gave us. I didn't actually want to call it that, but oh well, what can you do? I deliver some eggs to Gus, bringing us up to a total of 24, which is what he asked for. 
Someone has destroyed a loot box again. Shocker. I get trout soup, a coconut, a dagger, a pair of shoes, a chanterelle, a leek, some decorative items, a cactus fruit, and Sam's old guitar. I now have three of Sam's old guitars. It's getting a bit weird at this point. Also, how many guitars does Sam need? Why has he thrown away three of his old guitars? Why did he need three in the first place? Are there more broken guitars? Where am I? Who am I? Why am I? It's off to the mines for the rest of the day to collect frozen geodes and defeat bats for Clint's special order. I managed to get a golden coconut on day 96, then I complete the Simon Says game in a cave to earn three golden walnuts. I spend the rest of the day fishing for, of course, more golden walnuts. Day 97. We have now collected a total of 91 golden walnuts. We're almost there, we're actually so close now. I dig up a walnut, donate two items to the field office, make a monster musk, buy two heaters and a good bit of hay from Marnie, and crack open a golden coconut to receive a golden walnut. The rest of the day is spent in the mines collecting frozen geodes and finishing off Clint's special order. Clint sends us the crafting recipe for the geode crusher on the morning of day 98. Also, Gus sends us the mini fridge for completing his special order. I break a muscle node on Ginger Island and receive a golden walnut, then it's off to the volcano dungeon. I use my watering can to make a bridge to the left side of the entrance area, then I go through a door leading to two hidden golden walnuts. I spend the majority of the day going through the volcano, defeating monsters and breaking rocks to collect more golden walnuts. I do make time to visit the pirate cave at the end of the day though. I play a game of darts three times to earn three more walnuts. Also, I managed to play a perfect game. Basically, for this game of darts, you need to score 301 points. A perfect game requires you to earn 60 points five times in a row, then earn one more point. I actually got pretty nervous during this for some reason, but I managed to do it. Honestly, that might be what I'm most proud of achieving during this entire playthrough so far. I gain access to Mr. Key's walnut room on day 99. I accept his quest to bring him four prismatic shards. All of the time I've spent in the skull caverns and in the mines has given us a plentiful amount of prismatic shards, so I don't mind giving them away for this quest. I purchase some bait, trout soups and lead bobbers from Willy, then I pay somebody to teleport me back to the farm. After collecting my geodes, I accept an order from Caroline. She wants us to grow and ship 100 pineapples. That is not happening and I do not know why I accepted that quest. I mean, don't get me wrong, I would love to complete that quest, because the reward is the crafting recipe for the solar panel, but we don't have enough time to grow that many pineapples. I crack open my geodes and I don't receive a ghost crystal or a lunarite, which I believe are the final two minerals I need to donate to the museum. I deliver four prismatic shards to Mr. Key, completing his order and earning 40 key gems. I use these gems to purchase 100 magic bait. Now it is time to do something I wasn't able to do during spring. It is time to catch the legend. Like I said at the end of spring, magic bait allows us to catch the legend during any season. So, armed with nothing but sheer willpower, I fail to catch the legend. This is going to be rough. Day 100 starts in a delightful way as our beloved loot boxes have appeared again. The first one is actually really good. A solar essence, a topaz and a phoenix ring. As far as I know, when you get knocked out while wearing this ring, you get back half of your maximum health when you wake up. It also can only be found in chests in the volcano dungeon. Our second chest gives us a mineral, an oyster, an egg, two sardines and a common mushroom. While footage of me opening loot boxes plays, I want to say something about my plan for the next batch of loot boxes next week. At this point, we're really close to completing the museum collection and catching every fish. Those are two of our goals. I said before that when I complete two goals, I will adjust the settings of the loot boxes as a reward. We should have both of these goals completed at some point next week, so we're finally going to see what happens when the amount of loot boxes that appear is increased. As well as this, we'll see what happens when the amount of gold we get is increased and the chance of finding a rare item is increased. I am very excited, to say the least. Also, I apologize if these rambles while I'm opening loot boxes aren't your thing. I've tried to find a good balance of me listing out every item I get and doing these rambles, so hopefully the whole loot boxes aspect is still enjoyable for you to watch. 
I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out so far, but you know, there's always room for improvement, so we'll see how things go. But for now, I'm going to stick with a mix of rambling and listing every item I get. It's off to the night market for the rest of the day, where I enter the submarine and do some fishing to catch the blobfish, the midnight squid, and the spookfish. The only fish that remains for us to catch is, of course, the legend. I turned some coffees I bought in the saloon last night into triple shot espressos on day 101. I harvest the winter forage that has grown and use them and some other winter forage I had to make winter seeds which I plant and water. Then it's off to the mountain lake where I once again fail to catch the legend. Look at how many nautilus shells there are at the beach on day 102. Look, I know it's not really a big deal, but I needed something nice after that failed attempt at catching the legend yesterday, so I'm like, this means the world to me right now. I use my remaining key gems to buy 20 more magic bait, just in case, along with 10 key seasoning. I purchase lead bobbers and a couple of trap bobbers from Willy, then I use the key seasoning I bought to make a gold star seafoam pudding. This gives us a plus 5 to our fishing skill. I eat this, equip a trap bobber to my fishing rod, and prepare for the biggest challenge of this playthrough so far. I caught the legend first try. I really do not understand this game sometimes. I have struggled so much. I have failed to catch the legend so many times before this. Then I eat a seafoam pudding and use a trap bobber and I catch it with no trouble at all. I do not understand. I'm not gonna lie though, I am really proud of myself right now. Not only have we caught the legend, we've also completed the fishing collection, which means that one of our four goals for this year has been completed. After purchasing some mega bombs from the dwarf, I head into the mines where I of course collect frozen geodes. I also spent day 103 collecting frozen geodes. Also on day 103, Willy sends us a star drop for completing the fishing collection. It's kind of funny to me how Willy says in his letter that it's been passed down through his family for a thousand years. Then he finally gives it to someone outside his family, and we eat it. I, I would be a bit annoyed about that if I was Willy. I head to Clint's on day 104 and finally receive the Ghost Crystal. Once again, I purchase Mega Bombs from the Dwarf and spend the rest of the day as well as day 105 collecting Frozen Geodes. On day 106, I enter Clint's shop, crack open my geodes and receive Lunarite. I donate this to the museum and nothing happens because I forgot to take the dinosaur egg with me. I could have just gone back to my farm and collected it from the chest it was in, but I was so annoyed with myself that I just went to sleep instead. Our winter forage is ready for harvest on day 107. You know, it's been fun harvesting this forage and turning them into seeds, but I'm afraid this is our final harvesting session for winter. I donate a dinosaur egg to the museum, fully completing the collection. I earn a star drop as a reward. But that is not the only reward we receive, no. You see, that's our second goal completed, which means it's time to improve the quality of the loot boxes. The results of this will be seen when we open them tomorrow. In the meantime, I accept an order from Mr. Key, which requires us to basically catch all five legendary fish again. I may have accepted his order, but I'm not going to do it. I'm staying well away from fishing, for a while at least. I use 5 walnuts to unlock the mailbox outside our Ginger Island farmhouse, then I use another 20 to have the warp tower built. This allows us to teleport back to Pelican Town from Ginger Island. Alright, let's not waste any time. Day 108 is loot box day. Our first one contains squid ink ravioli, an artifact for the island field office, a fish, and a statue. Green tea and an artifact are found in the second loot box, followed by a sword, two copper bars, another statue, a pepper, a cheese press, a bean hot pot, an eel, and a plant. All of these loot boxes were located on the farm too. It feels like we're already getting more loot boxes and more items. But we're not necessarily getting any rare items. That could change though, so we'll see what happens with the rest of the loot boxes. I get a thorns ring in the loot box, which is a good find. There was a keg in that same loot box too. I will say, it almost feels like we're back on day one with how quickly our inventory is filling up. I know that might sound like a complaint, but honestly it makes me pretty happy. It's nice getting a ton of items. This does mean, however, that I won't be able to list every item I receive because I would be here for a long, long, long time if I did that now that there's more items in every loot box. I get a tuna in a loot box. That's it. 
It feels like I'm getting a ton of cooked dishes now, which I certainly will not complain about. I also found a pair of genie shoes, so of course I'm going to wear them for the rest of this playthrough. It's been a while since I've seen a deluxe scarecrow, so I was very pleased to get one in a loot box. Meanwhile, the loom has slowly been making more and more appearances. Opening all of these loot boxes has made me so excited to see what happens when I complete another two goals. Especially when it comes to increasing the chance of getting a rare item. Will we get an Iridium Axe? 10 Prismatic Shards? A Sweet Gem Berry? Multiple Key Gems? Who knows? That does pose the question of how many goals do I set for the second year? I was originally planning on setting 4 goals, but the more goals we have, the more goals we can complete. The more goals we complete, the more times we can adjust the settings of our loot boxes. I will give it some thought and list my goals for the second year at the end of winter. Also, look at this little sneaky loot box. I went through the bushy area to collect a hidden golden walnut and found a loot box here. That really surprised me. Some bad news now, as even on Ginger Island, our loot boxes are not safe. Another has been broken. This is always a very sad moment. Day 109 is a very laid back day, which I am pretty grateful for, because honestly hunting all of those loot boxes yesterday took a lot out of me. I head to the Feast of the Winter Star Festival and give a Summer Spangle to Caroline. Jody then gives me a Purple Mushroom. Thanks. On day 110, I have once again made the error of going to Robin's too early. At this point, I fear this is a habit I will not be able to break. Instead of waiting, I head to the mines and do some fishing to collect trash. I accepted a special order from Linus to put 20 pieces of trash into a bin, and this is one of the easiest ways to get that trash. On day 111, Linus is... um... Uh, I... 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 I don't know. I actually don't know how to describe this. Let's just move on. Um, I head to Robin's. You will notice the time at the top right. It happened. Why? Like, okay, I get it. You want to go for a swim, but during winter, like, it has to be freezing. Why? Why would you? I asked Robin to upgrade one of her sheds. Um, that's what I did. That's the entire. I'm really confused. Why did Linus do that? All right, day 112. Let's forget about yesterday and focus entirely on today, the final day of our first year. Look at that, we made it. Well done, us. I collect the oak resin that has been deposited in the chest at the quarry, collect a banana from our banana tree and throw it into the shipping bin. I have now officially not completed my goal to do the entire shipping collection. You will notice two blank spaces in the screenshots on the screen right now. One is for the banana, which we have just taken care of. The other is for the radioactive bar. I do not have a radioactive bar. I also do not have enough radioactive ore to make a radioactive bar right now. This means we have failed our goal to complete the shipping collection. Sad times. But that is not all. I also reached maximum friendship with every villager. Except Leo. He's at, like, two hearts, so I, I failed that goal too. So overall, we failed two goals and completed two goals for our first year. You know what? I'm not too disappointed by that. It sucks, yeah, that we failed those goals, but we got really close, so I'm happy with how far we've gotten. Now, let's talk about our goals for year two. I have decided to set another four goals. Number one, craft every item. Number two, cook every recipe. Number three, ask Krobus to be our roommate. And number four, earn a total of 10 million gold. These goals should keep us on track and help us make steady progress throughout year two. Of course, I also want to complete the two goals I failed this year. Also, at the end of this playthrough, I'm going to make some really big changes to the loot box settings and see how wild things get with them. Any whomst, I hope you have enjoyed watching the first year unfold. I will see you all in year two. Day 113. The first day of our second year begins with a visit from Kent who has just returned to Pelican Town. Now we have to get him and Leo to maximum hearts. But still I suppose that's not too bad. I clear the farm of some debris that has appeared, mainly fiber and grass. 
I don't mind though, it's honestly pretty satisfying getting rid of this stuff with the scythe. I purchased just over 500 cauliflower seeds from Pierre, then I spend the rest of the day planting all of them. I'm hoping to have at least 200,000 gold by the end of spring so we can plant a ton of starfruit seeds at the beginning of summer. So we shall be planting quite a few cauliflower seeds this season. I accept a quest from Robin to collect and deliver 80 hardwood to her on day 114. The reward for this special order is that a new bed will be added to her shop. We don't get a crafting recipe, so it's not really important for us to complete this one. I sell some pumpkin seeds to Pierre and use the gold I received to purchase a ticket to Ginger Island. I clean up the farm here, then I accept a special order from Mr. Key to deliver four prismatic shards to him. I don't like giving prismatic shards away at this point, but there are still quite a few things I need to purchase from his shop, so this has to be done unfortunately. Just before I head to bed, I talk to Birdie to start her quest. Day 115 is the first loot box opening session of year 2. How very exciting. The first loot box gives us 5 rainbow trout, a lamp post and an oyster. This is followed by another rainbow trout, a tea sapling, boots, 9 blueberries, a mineral and a cooked dish. I am in desperate need of some gold, so I throw a few items into the shipping bin, then I receive a wilted bouquet and a keg from a loot box. Kegs are probably the item I want the most at this point, so I'm very happy about this. Next I receive a void essence, an artifact, a tropical curry, a mineral, an eggplant, an artifact, pancakes, two decorative items, and another artifact. I spot a deluxe scarecrow and other items on the ground outside Willy's shop, so I quickly scoop them up. I decide to check the tide pool area, and I'm glad I did, because I found a loot box that contains a soul sapper ring, a lobster, and a parsnip soup. It's while I'm collecting these loot boxes that I realize how much this is going to help us with the cooking and crafting recipes. We have received so many items that are needed for these various recipes, so I think the whole process of crafting every item and cooking every dish is going to be a lot more convenient than it normally is. Which is especially good news for us, because both of those are goals I set for year 2. It is also at this point that I wish I installed the mod that adds a third backpack upgrade to the game. We could really do with the extra inventory space right about now. But, you know, live and learn. And it does add a bit of a challenge element to the playthrough, so I suppose it's not all bad. Once again, the game has decided to taunt me by spawning a loot box in a place I cannot reach. It's actually kind of funny when this happens now, I'm not even annoyed by it anymore. I find Harvey's mallet in a loot box. Just like Alex's bat and Sam's old guitar, it is another weapon that you can't normally obtain. Speaking of Sam's old guitar, I receive another one in a loot box. I purchase some coffees from Gus, then I finish the day by doing a lap around the forest, opening loot boxes as I do. Now that I've realized just how many of these items will help us with the various recipes, I can't help but smile every time I get even the most basic of items like a void essence or a garlic or any crop really. All in all, I would say this was a very successful day of loot box opening. I quickly harvest a sweet gem berry in the greenhouse before passing out. On day 116, I turn my coffees into triple shot espressos, then I give the memento birdie gave us to Kent. I pick up some items on the beach on Ginger Island, then I open up a loot box. I receive Haley's iron. These unobtainable weapons would have been nice to get at the start of the game, but I can still treat them as like collector items at this point. I might dedicate a room in my house to displaying all of the weapons I get. I plant some ancient seeds, then I open up another loot box, followed by, you guessed it, another loot box. I receive a pair of boots, which I will happily add to my shoe collection, and a rusty sword, which I will kind of unhappily add to my weapon collection, I guess. Nothing against the rusty sword, it just pales in comparison to Haley's iron. I receive a snake vertebrae, pick up some items from the ground, and give the gourmet tomato salt to Gus, who gives us a Stardew Valley rose in return. I buy 500 cauliflower seeds, then I spot a loot box inside Pierre's shop. I somehow didn't see this when I walked in. I'm not sure how I managed to do that. I spend the rest of the day planting most of the cauliflower seeds I purchased. I plant a few more cauliflower seeds on the morning of day 117. I pay a visit to Clint, who isn't there, shocker. I sell some items to Pierre and find some loot boxes in the desert. It honestly never crossed my mind to check for loot boxes in this location. Unless I am terribly mistaken, I think this is the first time I've actually opened the loot box here. I give the Stardew Valley Rose to Sandy, who gives us the advanced TV remote. 
I spend the rest of the day in the Skull Caverns. I pay a visit to Robin's shop on day 118 where I purchase some wood. I was going to use this wood to have a shed upgraded, but I can no longer afford to upgrade the shed after buying the wood. So instead, I just ask Robin to build a brand new shed on the farm. I give the TV remote to George, receive an arctic shard, sell some salas to Pierre, and use the gold I get from that to purchase a workbench from Robin. I give the arctic shard to the wizard and receive a worm. Once again, it's back to Pierre's to sell more salads. I head to Ginger Island where I collect three bananas and realize I forgot to give the worm to Willy. I sell even more salads to Pierre so I can afford another ticket to Ginger Island, give the worm to William, receive the pirate's locket, and give it to Birdie, completing her quest. She rewards us with golden walnuts and the crafting recipe for fairy dust. I deliver four prismatic shards to Mr. Key and use the key gems I receive as a reward to purchase nothing. I want to buy Pierre's missing stock list so Pierre will start selling every seed during any season. I need 50 gems for this so I'm going to save up until I can afford it. I find a loot box in the jungle and place a banana on a podium to receive three more golden walnuts. I collect some oak resin on day 119 and add more kegs to the keg shed. I'm also making sure to send gifts to both Leo and Kent. I would like to reach maximum friendship with both of them as soon as I can. Next stop is the Adventurer's Guild. I'm pretty close to completing the remaining monster eradication goals, so I spend the rest of the day as well as days 120 and 121 inside the mines working on them. Also, the old abandoned Georgia Mart has been struck by lightning. Interesting. Day 122 is another loot box day. I won't lie, at this point I genuinely considered adding the mod I talked about earlier that adds another backpack upgrade to the game. But I stayed strong. I am an absolute beacon of willpower and perseverance. That and I'm too lazy to add the mod at this point, so it just wasn't happening. Another thought I had that's related to the whole loot boxes thing is a mod that lets you view all of the items you have stored in chests from one menu. For example, we have around 40 chests on the farm with random items in them. This mod would allow us to see every item in these chests and take items from these chests without actually going through any of them. It would make things a lot more convenient for us to say the least. But like I said, I do like that there is a bit of a challenge attached to the whole loot box thing in terms of managing all of the items we get and sorting our inventory. And again, I'm very lazy, so I can't be bothered adding another mod at this point. At the end of the day, I donate four items to the final bundle in the abandoned Georgia Mart. I ask Robin to upgrade our shed on day 123. I also purchase two mini fridges. I spend some time cutting grass to add more hay to the silo, gotta keep our animals happy, then I spend the remainder of the day chopping down trees for wood. I already have quite a bit of wood, but I'm always happy to get more. Day 124 is Cauliflower Harvest Day. Our bank account has been in complete shambles for the last few days, so I am very happy about this. I sell all of my cauliflower to Pier and purchase another 500 cauliflower seeds. I also realized that I accepted a special order to harvest and ship 100 cauliflower, so selling all of the cauliflower I had wasn't exactly the smartest choice I've made. But we will be able to buy back our cauliflower at a later date, so it's all good. Over on Ginger Island, I finally received the quest that changes the Skull Caverns. This means I can get radioactive ore. We will also receive 40 key gems if we reach floor 100, so I really want to complete this quest. I head to the saloon and buy some coffees and salads, turn my coffees into triple shot espressos and purchase some mega bombs from the dwarf and some explosive ammo from Marlin. Once again, I have to sell some salads to Pierre in order to be able to afford a bus ticket to the desert. Once I get to the desert, I trade 10 iridium bars for the desert warp totem crafting recipe, make some staircases and craft the desert warp totem. I spend the rest of the day planting my cauliflower seeds. I immediately warp to the desert on day 125. I'm taking absolutely zero chances here, I really want to reach floor 100 in the Skull Caverns. There are two reasons for this. Number one is I of course want to complete Mr. Key's quest. And number two, I haven't actually landed on floor 100 yet in this playthrough. This means I haven't watched the cutscene where Mr. Key gives us a drink that boosts our maximum health by 25 points. I want that. Thanks to a combination of the staircases, salads, explosive ammo, and bombs, I eventually make it to floor 100. This wasn't easy, I'll be honest, but it also could have been a lot worse. 
I mean, I have spent quite a bit of time in the Skull Cavern, so I would have been just a little bit upset with myself if I hadn't made it to floor 100. But I did, so I received the boost to my maximum health along with 40 key gems. What an absolutely marvellous day. On day 126, I finally get started on cleaning up the storage situation. I'm sure at least a couple of you have seen all of the chests on my farm and thought to yourselves, Wow, I really hope he cleans up his farm soon. I actually cannot believe how many random chests full of random items he has just scattered around the farm. Well, rest assured, I will put my entire being into making this storage shed look good. That being said, I do take a quick break to harvest some cauliflower. That was kind of poor timing, actually, now that I think about it. Maybe I'm not putting my entire being into making a nice storage shed. It's more like 95% of my being. Anyway, I toss a radioactive bar into the shipping bin, which means the shipping collection has finally been completed. That is one of the goals we failed during our first year, done and dusted. Nice. I head to the desert and trade Void Essence for the Void Ghost Pendant. I give this to Krobus, asking him to be our roommate. And with that, we have completed our goal to have Krobus move in with us. But, that is also another two goals completed, which means I can improve the settings of the loot boxes for the second time. I buy back 77 cauliflower, which combined with the cauliflower I harvested today will result in us shipping more than enough to complete the special order to ship 100 cauliflower. I spend the rest of the day continuing to work on the storage shed. I can indeed confirm the shipping collection has been completed on day 127, which is a lovely sight. More cauliflower is ready for harvest, which is even more lovely. Again, the rest of the day is spent organizing all of our items. I also quickly accept an order from Robin to collect 1,000 pieces of stone. Surprise, surprise, day 128 is spent working on the shed. Some fantastic news as day 129 is loot box day. My favorite time of the week. The amount of gold we get, the chance of getting rare items, and the overall quality of the items we get has been improved, so I'm very excited to see what we get here. It might be placebo effect, but I feel like I'm already seeing a difference, especially when it comes to the amount of an item we get. As in, we're getting multiple of the same cooking dish or multiple fish. I also get a star fruit in a loot box, which to me is evidence that we're well on the way to getting some high tier crops and items. Maybe we'll see a sweet gem berry or an ancient fruit soon. I also find a golden walnut in a loot box. Achieving perfection requires you to collect 130 golden walnuts, so finding these in the loot boxes is actually helping us a ton. It gives us a bit of leeway when it comes to finding all of the walnuts. Let's say I've received 4 of the 5 walnuts you get from fishing. I could spend more time fishing to get that one remaining walnut, or I could just say, well, I've got a golden walnut from a loot box, so I can just leave the fishing one alone. I don't actually need it anymore. That's a really nice bonus that I hadn't considered before. Also, the amount of gold we're getting is sort of hit or miss now. Sometimes my gold will increase by 300 or so when I open a loot box, then I'll open a different loot box and receive around 2000 gold. So, by the time I complete the remaining goals and adjust the settings, I could be getting around 4 or 5000 gold from each loot box, which would be very nice. I take a break from opening loot boxes to collect some oak resin and ask Robin to upgrade our house. Also, a loot box appeared right beside the shipping bin on Ginger Island. Every time I tried to open it, I opened the shipping bin menu instead. This was actually kind of funny to me, so I didn't mind not being able to get that one. Actually, saying that, with my luck, I guarantee there was a prismatic shard or a golden walnut or both in that loot box. Oh well, I guess we'll never know. I purchased Pierre's missing stock list and the key to the town for Mr. Key. Just in case anybody does not know, the key to the town allows us to enter any building regardless of the time. For example, Pierre's shop normally opens at 9am, but with this key we can enter his shop before then. It's more for convenience and saving a bit of time than anything else. I collect two artifacts for the field office from a chest, open a few more loot boxes but don't get anything interesting, and donate the two artifacts. The island field office collection has been fully completed. I receive 9 golden walnuts, a mango tree sapling, and a banana tree sapling as rewards. I purchase some salads and coffees in the saloon along with some mega bombs from the dwarf before the day ends. A mini cauliflower harvesting session takes place on day 130. Oh, also, Gus was on Ginger Island yesterday, so I purchased the tropical curry cooking recipe from him as well as a gold star bottle of mango wine. 
I donate the mango wine to finish off the final bundle. The abandoned Georgia Mart will be replaced with a theater overnight. I give Pierre's missing stock list to Pierre and sell my cauliflower. I also found a loot box inside the shop again. Then I head to the desert where I open some loot boxes here. Now that I know they spawn here, I'll be sure to check this place out every week. The rest of the day, as well as days 131 and 132, are spent in the Skull Caverns working on the monster eradication goals. On day 133, I've decided to start putting all of the ingredients needed for cooking recipes into the mini fridges I have. I want to get an idea of how many items I still need to collect for these recipes. The answer? Very few items, actually. I purchase the seeds of the crops I still need for these recipes from Pierre along with the flower seeds that I will need for a crafting recipe. In the secret woods, I give a sweet gem berry to the old Master Cannoli statue in exchange for a star drop. Then I plant all of the seeds I bought earlier today. You will notice I purchased 25 garlic seeds. That is because we will need 10 garlic to craft an item in the future. I am happy to announce on day 134 that once the crops have grown, we will have every item we need for the cooking recipes. That is absolutely tremendous news. The day gets even better as many, many, many cauliflowers are ready for harvest. I decide to toss around 200 of these into kegs to make cauliflower juice. I sell the rest of my cauliflower to Pierre. Next stop is Robin's, where I ask her to add two new rooms to her house, completely free of charge, I might add, which is very kind of her. I also ask her to upgrade the third shed on the farm. Next, I set up a crafting station in her house. The workbench lets us craft things using the items in any chest beside it. So I get to work on gathering all of the items I need for the crafting recipes and putting them into the chests around the workbench. Similar to the cooking recipes, I already have almost every item needed for these recipes. I will be entirely honest and say that this is in large part thanks to the loot boxes. There are at least a few items I would not have right now if I hadn't found them in loot boxes. Our garlic and bok choy are ready for harvest on day 135. I gotta say, bok choy? One of the coolest names I've ever heard for a vegetable. Anyway, I plant some mahogany tree seeds and sprinkle fertilizer on them. I need quite a bit of hardwood for crafting recipes, so I want to make sure these grow as quickly as possible. Next on the agenda is a trip to the desert where I do a bit of foraging, then I accept a special order from Gunther. He wants us to collect 100 bones. The reward for this is a crafting recipe, so of course I accept it. I pick up a clam at the beach and some bananas on Ginger Island. I also collect some cinder shards and dragon teeth from a chest. I accept an order from Mr. Key to bring him 100 each of different colored items. I dig up a golden walnut and collect another walnut from a bush. I open some loot boxes on the Ginger Island farm on day 136. Look, I'm gonna be completely honest here, I don't know how to make this entertaining anymore. I've run out of things to ramble about that are actually related to the playthrough and, and there's too many items in these loot box to list them all. I could start rambling about random things, but if there's one thing you need to know about me, it's that when I start rambling about something, I do not know when to close my mouth. It's, it's a bit of a problem, really. Like, I really want to be mysterious and cool, but I simply do not know how to stop talking. Any whomst, I head to the flower festival where I purchase the tub of flowers crafting recipe and a rare crow. Then I decide to dance with... nobody! Yeah, you see, my dancing skills are so good that I have actually been banned from participating in the flower dance. A apparently, I would make all the other villagers look terrible, so Mira Lewis said I just have to watch everyone else dance. Fair enough. When I return home, I take all of the items I need to purchase the obelisks in the wizard's tower and put them into a chest. I still need a few more dragon teeth, bananas, and clams, but other than that, I'm all good. I begin day 137 by putting a battery into a box in the tunnel beside the bus stop and placing a rainbow shell into a box near the bathhouse. I put 10 beads into the fridge in Mira Lewis's house, purchase 74 Georgia Colas in the saloon, collect some bananas from a chest on Ginger Island, and drop off some items in Mr. Key's walnut room. I believe I only need to drop off 34 more red items to complete his order. I make a desert warp totem, teleport to the desert, and put a solar essence into the mouth of the dragon skeleton. And that is it for today. 
I collect cauliflower juice from kegs on day 138 and find the casino membership card just outside our house. Just to clarify, this card appears here after you delivered the battery, rainbow shell, beets and solar essence to the places I delivered them yesterday. I sell my cauliflower juice to Pierre, purchase 34 spaghettis and 75 coffees from Gus, turn my coffees into triple shot espressos as always, and deliver the spaghetti to Mr. Key, completing his order and earning 40 key gems. I use these gems to purchase the heavy tapper and deluxe fertilizer crafting recipes, then I spend the rest of the day as well as day 139 going through the volcano dungeon. The purpose of this was to collect dragon teeth and work on the monster eradication goals. Artichokes, yams, red cabbage, fairy roses and taro roots are ready on day 140. I toss these into a mini fridge, collect a couple of oak resin at the bus stop, collect quite a bit more oak resin at the quarry and purchase two movie tickets. I give one of these tickets to Kent. In the theater, I buy popcorn for him and watch a movie called The Brave Little Sapling, which Kent seems to enjoy. The theater will help us reach Max's friendship with Kent and Leo even quicker, so I'm very happy it has been unlocked. I harvest some pineapples and ancient fruit on Ginger Island and place them into a chest beside seed makers to get pineapple and ancient fruit seeds. I head to Robin's shop and purchase all of the crafting recipes she has for sale, collect my seeds from the seed maker chest and plant them in the greenhouse. Now that I've taken everything I need for the crafting and cooking recipes and the obelisks and put them in the chests, I can safely begin selling pretty much everything else I have. This also means that when I open loot boxes in the future, I can sell all of the items I get from them. I will be holding on to the items I need to make kegs though, so copper and iron bars, oak resin and wood. And I will also make sure I keep items I can give to Kent and Leo as gifts. But other than that, we're about to start making a ton of gold. And with that, I think it's time to say goodbye to our second spring. I'm gonna be honest, I achieved a lot more than I expected to achieve this season. We got a ton of prep work done in terms of the crafting and cooking recipes, our friendships with Leo and Kent are looking pretty good, and overall I would say we are well on our way to achieving perfection. I look forward to seeing what happens in summer. Day 141 I start by heading to the sewers and purchasing two crafting recipes. And now I'm going to completely change the format of this video. At this point, the only things I have left to do to achieve perfection are the following. Build the four obelisks and the golden clock. Finish off the slime and Dougie's monster eradication goals. Get Kent and Leo to maximum friendship. Level up my foraging skill one more time. Obtain one more star drop by getting Krobus to 12 and a half hearts. Unlock a couple more crafting and cooking recipes and find three more golden walnuts. So, to avoid a situation where I talk about a bunch of things that aren't really important, or at least more so than I normally do, which is quite a bit, I'm going to talk about what I did each week instead of each day. With that out of the way, days 141 through 147 are spent accepting a special order to once again bring Mr. Key a bunch of different colored items. I also harvest ancient fruit, buy back some ancient fruit that I sold, and toss the ancient fruit into seed makers. I purchase starfruit seeds from Sandy and plant them on the farm. I open up some loot boxes, and from this point forward I won't be showing me opening them all up. Instead, I will put all of the items I receive from them into chess and show them all at the end of each season. Also, here is a quick update on the greenhouse. It is almost entirely filled with ancient fruit seeds. There's also a few corn seeds and pineapple seeds, which I will replace with ancient fruit seeds in the future. Finally, I spend quite a bit of time working on the remaining monster eradication goals. During days 148 through 154, I received the final star drop I needed from Krobus, which honestly wasn't difficult at all. We're able to give Krobus a gift every day because he's a roommate, which greatly speeds up the whole process. I finish off the monster eradication goals by defeating the final Dougie I needed. I'm always really happy to cross this one off the list. I spend some time in the Volcano Dungeon where I use Golden Walnuts to unlock the shortcut to the shop, and I purchase a cooking and crafting recipe from the Dwarf here. Once again, I open up some loot boxes, collect oak resin from the quarry, and harvest starfruit. I toss some of the starfruit into the keg shed and sell the rest of them to Pier. 
I ask Robin to add a seller to the house, purchase two cinema tickets, buy some coffees in the saloon and some starfruit seeds from Sandy, and watch the Journey of the Prairie King movie with Kent. I plant the starfruit seeds, collect more oak resin, and begin filling up a second shed with kegs. I also get started on creating an ancient fruit empire on the Ginger Island farm. Here is a bit of a progress update on how the farm looks to begin days 155 through 161. It's not much, but it's honest work. I actually cannot believe I referenced that meme in 2023. What am I doing? I exchange some golden walnuts for key gems, and once again I accept the different colored item special order from Mr. Key. We have also finally received a special order from Caroline. Completing her special order will reward us with the solar panel crafting recipe. I've put a ton of work into collecting as many pineapple seeds as possible, so I am absolutely positively prepared for this special order. There is one small problem, though. Caroline wants us to grow and ship 100 taro roots, not 100 pineapples. That is a bit of a curveball, to say the least, but there is no way I'm going to allow myself to miss out on that crafting recipe. I collect some key seasoning from a chest, and I use it to make a gold star lucky lunch. Eating this will give a nice boost to our luck. I collect some star fruit from a keg shed, sell it to Pierre, and buy Deluxe Speed Grow. I head to Ginger Island and exchange bone fragments for 36 taro tubers, bringing us up to a total of 43, which I plant with the Deluxe Speed Grow. The plan is to harvest all of the taro roots when they're ready and put them into seed makers. I will then plant all of the seeds we get from these seed makers. I sell some items to Pierre, and actually I don't think I need to say I sold things to Pierre anymore unless I make like a couple hundred thousand gold from it. So you won't have to listen to me say that anymore. I head to the casino where I eat my lucky lunch to boost our luck and spend quite a bit of time using these slot machines. Eventually I earn 8900 key coins, so I spend some gold to bring us up to a total of 10,000. I use these to purchase the alien rare crow. I plant more ancient fruit seeds on Ginger Island, buy a rare crow from the dwarf, and collect one rare crow and a skeleton statue from the rewards available to us at the museum. I didn't mean to pick up the skeleton statue. There's there's actually a second rare crow in the museum. That's that's what I actually wanted to pick up, not the skeleton statue. I return a short while later to collect the aforementioned second rare crow. Then I start opening up loot boxes. Actually, why am I mentioning this? I already said I'm just going to show every item I get at the end of the season. There's no reason for me to mention this anymore. I apologize. That that was just a bit of a lackadaisical moment on my part. I collect some starfruit wine, plant some summer forage seeds, and harvest the first batch of taro roots that have grown. I toss these into a seed maker and plant the resulting 26 taro tubers. Another starfruit seed shopping spree is on the agenda, along with the routine acquisition of Deluxe Speed Grow. I plant the starfruit seeds on Ginger Island. I watch a movie with Kent, harvest some taro roots, toss them into a seed maker, and use bombs to break the rocks at the dig site. The goal here is, of course, to obtain more bone fragments. I've already got some bone fragments with me that I obtained from defeating skeletons, so I take my alarmingly sized collection of bones to the island trader. I exchange these for another 42 taro tubers, which I plant on the Ginger Island farm. I make sure to put them close to the river so they grow faster. Alright, we're almost at the end of summer. Nice. Days 162 through 168 are spent harvesting starfruit, purchasing the final three crafting recipes you can get from Mr. Key, along with Mr. Key's hat for some reason, harvesting summer forage, watching a movie with Kent, I really want to get this friendship goal out of the way, and sending a duck feather to Leo for his birthday, which results in us reaching maximum friendship with him. Now only Kent remains. I harvest all of the tower roots that have grown along with a ton of star fruit, throw the tower roots into the shipping bin, harvest even more star fruit and toss them into keg shed number one and keg shed number two. I visit Robin and buy a couple stacks of wood, then I head to Clint so I can get copper ore and coal. I receive the crafting recipe for the solar panel, collect oak resin, and cook almost every recipe I have unlocked so far. I retrieve a few ingredients I need from the chest where I've kept all of the loot box items I've received during summer and make a few more dishes. I then repeat this process for the crafting recipes, making every item I've unlocked so far. I buy tomato seeds because I need them for a couple of cooking recipes along with some extra cooking ingredients just to be on the safe side. I finish off the season by planting my tomato seeds. 
Also, I was going to show footage of me opening every chest I store the loot box items in, but that footage is like 2 minutes long. So, in the spirit of saving time, I am instead going to put screenshots of the items I received on the screen. I will have 3 separate groups of screenshots and I'll show each group on the screen for like 10 seconds maybe? But of course, do feel free to pause the video if you need more time to look at them. I'll still be here, waiting patiently. Also, a handy feature of the automate mod is that I can use wood pathways to connect the chest to the shipping bin. Every item that can be thrown into the shipping bin will automatically be deposited into it. That is very handy, very handy indeed. I receive around 71,000 gold for the items I got in loot boxes. I thought I'd get around 100,000 gold at least, but you know, not every loot box can be a winner. Moving on to the season of fall now as we begin days 169 through 175. I collect starfruit wine from a keg shed, not just once but twice, and it was very, very nice. Also, some fantastic news as I realize I have learned the recipe for roasted hazelnuts on the last day of summer. This is perfect timing as Kent loves roasted hazelnuts. Not only that, but we only need three hazelnuts to make the dish, and hazelnuts are a fall forage item. I decide to reset my foraging perk as I want to choose the perk that gives us a chance to collect two of any forage item we pick up. It's movie time once again. Kent is receiving the royalty treatment today as I get a star drop sorbet for him. Unfortunately, Kent isn't the biggest fan of the movie that is playing this month. This means we won't get any friendship points for the movie aspect, but we will still get the bonus 50 friendship points for getting him the snacks he loves. I sell my starfruit wine to Pierre and choose the foraging perk I mentioned earlier. Deluxe Speed Grow has quickly become my new favorite item in the game. I collect the fruit in the bat cave and plant the fall forage seeds I made. A mini ancient fruit harvesting session takes place and I gotta say, our ancient fruit empire is really coming along nicely now thanks to the planting of more seeds. I've decided to plant ancient fruit seeds on the farm in Pelican Town as well as on the Ginger Island farm. This will help us get even more ancient fruit seeds. And ancient fruit has now been added to the growing list of words that I have said way too many times during this playthrough. I use the fall forage I harvested along with the forage I kept in a chest to make more fall seeds which I plant. The goal is to max out our foraging skill by the end of fall. I have been dilly dallying for far too long when it comes to that. More ancient fruit is ready, delicious. I stand on my farm for a few seconds, not entirely sure what I was doing here. I collect more wine, sell it to Pierre, I cannot emphasize how much I enjoy using Deluxe Speed Grow, and present a magnificent dish of roasted hazelnuts to Kent. Moving on to days 176 through 182, I begin by harvesting the fall forage that has grown. I use that forage along with the forage I had in the chest to make more fall seed, which I of course plant again. Good news as the tomatoes in the greenhouse are ready, along with a few ancient fruit which I toss into kegs. I make a fruit salad and a fish stew, and with that, I have cooked every recipe I have unlocked at this point. I give roasted hazelnuts to Kent, maxing out his friendship. That also means I have achieved the goal I set for the first year to reach maximum friendship with every villager. I head to the wizard's tower and have him build the island obelisk on our farm. I decided to get that one first because I'm going to be going back and forth between our ginger island farm and the pelican town farm quite a bit for the rest of this playthrough. I harvest a colossal amount of ancient fruit. Uh, you know, actually I take that back, it's not a colossal amount, not yet anyway. I'm still waiting for the rest of the ancient fruit to grow. I harvest some fall forage, collect oak resin from the quarry, actually, yeah, I, I don't need to mention collecting oak resin anymore, it's, it's kind of a given that I'm going to collect it every Sunday in order to keep making kegs, I, there's a lot of things I don't need to mention anymore, I'm wasting so much of your time, I'm sorry, I really am, but I can't help it. Um, I learn how to make blackberry cobbler and I immediately make a blackberry cobbler just to get it out of the way. I fill the remaining spaces in the keg shed, harvest ancient fruit, and plant fall seeds. For the duration of days 183 through 187, I fill up the kegs, and for the final time, I harvest fall forage. We have finally reached level 10 in foraging. At this point, all I need to do in terms of the goals we said is to earn a total of 10 million gold, craft 2 more items, and cook 5 more dishes. In terms of achieving perfection, I also need to craft the two items and cook the five dishes for that, 
as well as buy the golden clock and build the three remaining obelisks on our farm. Once again, it is time to change the format of this video, only slightly though. We have very little to do at this point, so for the remainder of fall as well as the entirety of winter, I will only be talking about the important things that happened during those periods of time. With that being said, during days 188 to 196 I learned how to cook crab cakes, make a crab cake, keep my kegs fully stocked with ancient fruit, ask Robin to build a third shed on her farm and attend the Spirits Eve Festival where I buy the last rare crow I need and the jack-o'-lantern crafting recipe. Immediately following the festival I return home and make a jack-o'-lantern. Then, on the final day of fall, I learn how to make Fiddlehead Risotto, cook the dish, unlock the crafting recipe for the Deluxe Scarecrow, and craft it. That was the final item I needed to craft. Also, this time I'm actually going to let the footage of me going through the items I got from loot boxes play instead of just showing screenshots of the items. Primarily because I do want to talk about a few things before fall ends. Firstly, just to go back to the topic of crafting recipes. Crafting every item was one of our goals, which means that that is the sixth goal we have completed. So it is time once again to improve the settings of the loot boxes. Our final two goals are to earn 10 million gold and cook every dish. The cooking every dish goal. You unlock the final recipe on the last day of winter in year two, so that is the earliest we will be able to complete all of our goals and improve the loot box settings for the fourth time. As for earning a total of 10 million gold, I do think it's possible for us to achieve that before the end of winter. The Ginger Island farm is covered in ancient fruit, so we basically have an unlimited supply of those for our kegs. Speaking of kegs, I already have two sheds full of kegs, but I also asked Robin to build a third shed on the farm. That's basically our safety net. You'll see after I finish showing off the loot box items that one of the things I do during this final day of fall is I fill up the new shed. It isn't upgraded yet, so we can still add more in the future, which again, you know, that's just a way of really trying to ensure that I do reach that 10 million gold mark by the end of winter. I gotta say, I'm really excited about this playthrough ending. Not in like a, oh I can't wait for this playthrough to be over, I'm sick of it type of way, but rather I'm just excited to see how winter and maybe even year 3 go? Maybe? Will I even have to go into year 3? Or will I do the impossible? Will I finally achieve perfection in one of my playthroughs on day 224? No. I'm sorry for the spoiler, but no, it's me, that's not happening. As much as I enjoy playing Stardew Valley, and as many hours as I've spent playing this game, which happens to be like 880 something hours at this point, uh, yeah, the, the last thing I have to do in every playthrough is build the golden clock, that won't be any different here, I already know for a fact I'm going to have to go into year 3 to get the gold I need for it. But honestly, that doesn't bother me, you know, like I've said, I've had a lot of fun with this playthrough, so I don't mind going even further with it and spending more time on this. I assume the footage of me going through the items has ended, so let's move on. For the remainder of the final day of fall, I fill up the new shed with kegs, connect the chest to the shipping bin, and take a moment to bask in the glory of our ancient fruit farm. I collect ancient fruit wine from our first and second sheds, sell all of it to Pierre, pick up some items on the ground in his shop, continue my mission to single-handedly keep the saloon in business by buying copious amounts of coffee, and build the earth and ocean obelisks. Also, look, I know my farm is still a mess, believe me, I'm well aware of it. I promise, it will look absolutely sterling by the end of this playthrough. I earn 55,000 gold from the loot box items this month, I will be completely honest and say that I didn't open all of the loot boxes this time, hence the lower amount of gold. Days 197 through 224. It's time to talk about winter. I head to the sewer and reset my farming perks. I want to choose the perk that gives a 40% bonus to the amount of gold we get from selling artisan goods. This is important for us because wine is an artisan good. I get to work on cleaning up the farm in preparation for the decorating I'll be doing soon. I head to sleep and choose the wrong perk. What's even worse is I never went back to the sewers to reset the perks and get that 40% bonus. I am the opposite of smart sometimes. The loot box opening adventure begins. Again, I won't be showing me opening up loot boxes outside of this little segment here. I'll just show all of the items I get at the end of winter. 
it is incredibly satisfying harvesting all of this ancient fruit. I am genuinely over the moon with how much ancient fruit we have growing here. I learn how to make a poppy seed muffin and I cook it of course. Real quick, I would like to thank Robin for allowing us to buy wood from her. I've already spent so much time chopping down trees, I would actually cry if I couldn't buy wood. Also, I, I guess I would like to say thank you to Clint for selling iron and, and copper ore. Yeah, he, he does tend to try to sabotage me at least once during every playthrough, but... I, I mean, he is helping us to make the copper and iron bars we need for kegs, so I, I guess I'm grateful or whatever. I learn how to make bruschetta, and as always, I also cook the dish. I collect ancient fruit wine from one, two, three sheds, and I take the ancient fruit I was keeping in one, two, three sheds. I sell all of these items to Pierre, which pushes us up to total earnings of 10.2 million gold. That is the third goal we set for year two, and our seventh goal overall completed. The only goal we have left is to cook every dish. I head to the wizard's tower and build the fourth and final obelisk, the desert obelisk. Oh, also, I asked Robin to upgrade our third shed. The reason why I didn't show that is because I didn't want to spoil how the farm looks. But don't worry, I will reveal the farm in all its glory really soon. I learn how to make shrimp cocktail and cook it. And with that, the final goal has been completed. Nice. But we're not done yet. No, see, we still need to achieve perfection. All we have to do for that is buy the golden clock. It does cost 10 million gold, but at the same time, we can earn that gold pretty easily by continuing to make and sell ancient fruit wine. Also, as it is the final day of winter, I'm going to show screenshots of the items I found in loot boxes during this season on the screen. Again, feel free to pause the video if you need more time to look at the pictures. I've also decided not to sell these items. Instead, I'm going to keep them here so I can compare them to the items we get from the loot boxes we open in spring of year 3. I also mentioned that we completed our 8th and final goal. That means the loot boxes will be even better in year 3. Also, also, you can't actually see me do it because these are screenshots, but I took the wedding ring and a beanie out of the chests here. I head to Emily's house and use her sewing machine to dye my pants black. I retrieve a pair of crystal shoes from a chest and return to the sewing machine where I use a piece of cloth and a geode to make a grey hoodie. It looks good, but not great. It just doesn't have that level of... sterlingness that I'm looking for. Is sterlingness a word? Well, it is now, I suppose. I return once more and combine a field snack with a piece of cloth to make a denim jacket. That is what I'm looking for. Now I feel completely at peace with myself. No, but in all seriousness, I do actually really like this outfit. The denim jacket looks pretty nice, especially when it's paired with the crystal shoes. Also, I have an announcement. Behold, trash can. I have also decided to put the wedding ring I mentioned earlier into a chest beside the trash can. It just felt natural to me to put these two beautiful items beside each other. And that is the end of winter and the end of our second year. All that is left for us to do now is to build the golden clock. Let's just get right to it. Days 225 to 252, aka all of spring in year 3, begin with a visit from Grandpa. He is very happy with the progress we have made here on Pay to Win Farm. I clear out the wood, fiber and rocks that have appeared on the farm, then I buy two stacks of grass starter. These will be used to make the farm look more aesthetically pleasing. I would like to give you all a sneak peek of the items we have gotten from our first round of loot box opening. You will notice we have received 54 largemouth bass and 36 cookies among other items. I feel like I may have made the loot boxes just a little bit too good at this point, so I definitely won't be selling any of these items. Just in case anybody is curious, here is the settings I used for the loot boxes after I completed 6 goals. And here is the settings I'm using now. It's safe to say the quality of the items in the loot boxes have absolutely increased too, as I'm starting to get things like legendary fish in them now. Any whomst, all of spring is spent harvesting ancient fruit and throwing them into kegs, along with the typical loot box opening sessions every week. On the final day of spring, I collect all of the ancient fruit and ancient fruit wine from one, two, three chests. I sell everything to Pierre, which brings me up to over 10 million gold. 
I head to the wizard's tower and finally purchase the golden clock which I place in the center of the farm. As always, here is a look at all of the items I received from loot boxes during the last four weeks. Now that we have essentially reached the end of the playthrough, I would like to give you all my final definitive thoughts on the loot boxes. First of all, they added a brand new level of fun to the game for me. I was pretty much always excited when it came time to hunt them down and open up all of the loot boxes every week. Especially in the early stages of the game when each loot box had the potential to help us with the community center and the museum collection. But even after completing both of those, it was still nice to consistently receive items that I could, uh, you know, give to villagers or use them in crafting or cooking recipes. I do remember being worried that the loot boxes would eventually be useless, but I was completely wrong about that. They provided us with some kind of benefit the entire time. Being able to get golden walnuts for them was a very nice bonus too. I probably don't even need to say this, but the loot boxes absolutely made the game easier. If I was short on gold, I could sell the items I got. I always had items I could give to the villagers as gifts, I completed some bundles in the community center with less stress than normal. The museum collection was a lot more convenient, to say the least. Overall, the loot boxes made quite a few aspects of the game a lot more convenient, if not just downright easier. I would definitely recommend downloading the Overworld Chess mod and giving this a try if you ever get bored of playing the game normally. On day 253, a couple of notifications pop up letting us know that we have achieved perfection. I'm ready to head to the summit and watch the final cutscene, but before I do, I would like to show you all some screenshots. First we have the storage shed. It's nothing fancy, but I think it looks okay. And it kept our farm tidy because I wasn't throwing my items into random chests on the farm. We also have one of the three keg sheds. I was able to fill the shed entirely with kegs because of the automate mod. What I did was put ancient fruit into the chest, which would then be put into the kegs. The wine that was produced would go right back into the chest. We have our greenhouse, which again, nothing fancy. I just have a ton of ancient fruit growing here. It's the same story with the Ginger Island Farm, or as I called it, the Ancient Fruit Empire. This is really what helped us earn 10 million gold. We have our house. If you've seen my previous playthroughs, then I'm sure this looks familiar. I pretty much decorate my house like this every single time. Finally, we have the farm. I really do think this is the nicest looking farm I have ever made. I am so happy with how it turned out. Forget about achieving perfection. This right here is what I'm most proud of. I could happily look at this picture for hours. Now, let's have a bit of fun with the loot boxes one last time. I have doubled the values I last used for the loot boxes because I'm curious as to what kind of effect that will have on them. The first loot box I open gives us over 5 million gold and thousands of items. This repeats with every loot box I open. This is incredibly satisfying. I could happily spend the entire day just opening these up. But I think it's time for us to say goodbye to the loot boxes. I head to the summit where the final cutscene in the game plays. And that is the end of our journey. As always, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.